Time passing in total offense list and winding up a brilliant 1981 campaign, leading his team to a 7-4 record with three of those losses coming by a total of eight points. West Virginia counters with an equally fine signal caller and senior Oliver Luck, a Hall of Fame scholar athlete who holds every career record in passing and total offense with the Mountaineers who finished eight and three. Luck's number one target, tight end Mark Rao, who caught a school record 61 throws this year. Defensively, Florida is led by number 85, All-American tackle David Galloway, one of just two senior starters on Charlie Pell's crew, described by many as the team of the future in the SEC. West Virginia's defenders include outside linebacker Daryl Talley, number 90, who's synonymous with the big hit and the big play. The Gators and the Mountaineers, aerial warfare in the 14th annual Beach Bowl, today on CBS. CBS Sports presents the Peach Bowl. This CBS Sports special is sponsored by Dotson, who invites you to see all the exciting new 1982 Dotson cars and trucks at your Dotson dealer today. And by Federal Express, when you have a package that absolutely, positively has to be there overnight, Federal Express. Welcome to the start of a great New Year's weekend of football watching college and professional on CBS Sports. We're normally the warm and sunny south in Atlanta, Georgia, but not so today. Hi, everybody. I'm Frank Lieber, along with Johnny Morris. Started to rain during the night. Temperatures in the 30s, and I think, Johnny, it could have an effect on the strategy of this game. Oh, yes. I had to bring my Chicago coat down here to get ready for this football game. As you mentioned, two good quarterbacks. Both teams like to air the ball out. They throw 50% of the time, and, of course, this mud this situation could have an effect on that, but I hope they don't, because we want to have a good time to see some air, see some ball in that air. Well, neither team runs the football that well, but the runners could be a very big factor. That's right. As it gets muddier, they could go to the heavy duty backs. Florida, of course, has James Jones. He's gained 671 yards, a good heavy duty back. And on the other side of the coin, West Virginia's Dane Conwell. He has not gained too many yards, but the West Virginia coaches tell me that if they're going to win this football game, despite the fact they throw a lot, he has got to get yards up the middle for him. A man who is always prepared, regardless of the weather, is our colleague working with us down in the field, Dick Stockton. Richard? I don't know what you guys are talking about. I think it's a splendid day for football. Yes, it has been raining, although it is not raining right now. It is awfully cold here. And, of course, a lot of people think that West Virginia could get a little bit of an edge to cut down on some of that Florida speed with the wet turf. The Florida people think the pressure is going to be on the secondary because they won't know when the receivers are cutting. They're kind of happy with it. In fact, they say on a scale from 1 to 10 right now, the field's a 7, although it's going to get chewed up. It was covered, of course, prior to the game, and we'll see what happens this afternoon. I'll be here if you need me, guys. I'm ready. Nice job on the clothes selection. You look like you're ready. Temperatures in the 30s. It is wet. It is cold. And we're near the kickoff of this afternoon's 14th annual Peach Bowl game between the West Virginia Mountaineers and the Florida Gators. We'll be ready to tee it up in just a moment. A lot of enthusiastic fans for both sides. Braving the elements and awaiting the opening kickoff. West Virginia, no stranger to the Peach Bowl. They've been here three times. Their record is 2-1. and one. Florida for the first time ever. Ivory Curry, number 26, the deep man for the Florida Gators as Paul Woodside gets ready to kick it off. The referee is Vance Carlson, the umpire Charles Weems, the headlinesman Frank Ellis, the line judge Kent Hout, the field judge Tom Finken, and the back judge is Artie Falk. Here we go. New Year's Eve bowl action from Atlanta, Fulton County Stadium. The kick is high and it is short and coming down to Scott Marshall and Marshall, the short man, goes out of bounds on the far side, just shy of the 30-yard line. So Florida goes to the offense and let's meet the Gators, starting backs and receivers. Play quarterback from Lakeland, Florida. Steve Miller, tailback, Boynton Beach, Florida. My name is James Jones. I play fullback in Pompano Beach, Florida. Broughton Lane, Miami, Florida, wide receiver. This is Mr. Jackson, wide receiver, Delray Beach, Florida. First and ten for the Gators, and they start off on the ground with James Jones, 6'3", 236, out of Pompano Beach. 
Now let's take a look at the Florida Gators starting offensive line. Danny Plunk on the offensive tackle from right on the floor. Ron Frazier, left guard, McClinney, Florida. Phil Bromley, center, Pensacola, Florida. Buddy Schulteis, offensive guard, Naples, Florida. My name is Dan Fike. I'm an offensive tackle from Pensacola, Florida. Mike Malarkey, tight end from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Handoff going to B. Lang, number two, coming around from a wide receiver position on the reverse, and he's tripped up behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be third down and nine needed for the first down. Here's the West Virginia defensive line. They play that front three, or in the colleges, I guess they call it a 5-2. 5-2, basically like a 3-4 defense. Third down. Florida Gators need nine for the first down. Ball is at their 28-yard line. One back. And it is James Jones, and here's Wayne Peace. First pass of the day. Protection is excellent. Now he's flushed out of the pocket. Still looking downfield. He's going to have to eat the football. Driven out of bounds, well short of the first down, near the 35-yard line. The field, we might point out, was covered until an hour or so before the game. So the field itself is not in bad shape, except for some spots between the 40-yard lines. The sidelines are very wet. And you see a ton of football players. Each team brought over 100 players. 104 for each team. That's 208. Of course, that includes all the, the gentlemen who were played as blocking dummies, never got to play during the season. They have earned a right to come on this trip, and they're all playing. Joe Barakavich with the kick. The receiver slipped and went down. Mickey Walzak at the 28-yard line. Let us meet the West Virginia starting backs and receivers. Oliver Luck, quarterback, University Heights, Ohio. Mickey Walzak. Tailback, Saratoga Springs, New York. Hi, Dad. Dan Conwell, fullback, Burlington South Point, Ohio. Gary Mullen, wide receiver, Claire and PA. Hi, Mom. Wayne Brown, split in, Somerville, New Jersey. Here come the Mountaineers in white. First offensive play of the day. First and ten from their 23-yard line. Lights already on here at the Atlanta Fulton County Stadium. And Oliver Luck back to throw on the very first play from scrimmage, hitting Billy Evans. And Evans is stacked up behind the line of scrimmage. Loss of three in the play back to the 21. Let's meet the West Virginia offensive line. Frank Kinzel, Solon, Ohio, offensive tackle. Andre Gifts, offensive guy, Oxford Hill, Maryland. Dave Johnson, center, Penn Hills, Pennsylvania. Hi, Dad. Mike Durrett, offensive guard, Charlottesville, Virginia. Keith Jones, offensive tackle, Charleston, West Virginia. Mark Rout, tight end, Rome Spring, Pennsylvania. Straight handoff up the middle to Dane Conwell, the fullback, for short yardage. They lost three on the previous play. He got the three back, so it'll be third down and ten needed for the Mountaineers. And now let's set the defense for you for the Florida Gators. They also play that three-man front. And watch out for number 85, Dave Galloway. He is a good one. He's a big one and one of the real pro prospects in this football game. Linebackers. Four fine linebackers and the deep backs. Two of their defensive starters are seniors. The rest underclassmen. All of the offensive starters are underclassmen as Luck breaks out for the first down to the 35-yard line. First first down to the ball game. Oliver Luck on the quarterback draw. They have not done very much of that. It was offside against Florida. Obviously, the call will be declined. And West Virginia comes up with Oliver Luck on the draw, running the football. And they haven't got a lot of depth at quarterback. They, they got to hope he doesn't get hurt. Florida, decline, first down. So the Mountaineers get the first first down of the ball game at their 35-yard line. And you can see the crisscross blocking, great trap blocking right up the middle. And Luck takes it down. Finally, number 18. That's Tony Lilly. Tony Lilly. Tony is a nephew of Bob Lilly, the former Cowboy great. There's Don Nealon. The head coach of the West Virginia Mountaineers doing a great job in just his second year. First and ten. Luck back to throw it. Little swing pass out to Walzak. And Walzak breaks a couple of tackles. Gets beyond the 40 to the 43-yard line. Mickey Walzak, their second leading receiver on the year. As he's stacked up by Bruce Baugh, number 47 of the Florida Gators. He caught 41 passes during the regular season, and as you saw, Oliver Luck just dumped that ball as he was swinging out in the flat, and that's what they like to do. West Virginia has a control-type passing attack, 
try and keep you off guard, and Luck is so smart. You know, he only had one B in college. I'd say that's pretty smart. 3.96, great average. And off goes to the fullback, Dane Conwell, youngster from South Point, Ohio, will be close for the first down at the 45-yard line. We may have a measurement. There's Charlie Pell. You talk about a turnaround guy. He's had a reputation of turning programs around. Yes, he did well at Clemson, of course, at uh, Jacksonville State, and here at Florida. 0-10 and 1 his first year. A couple years ago, turned them around to 8 and 4, and this year 7-4 going in here to the Peach Bowl. Short of the first down, third down, less than a yard. First down as Conwell plows up the middle to midfield, and West Virginia is on the move. Good running by Conwell as he broke a tackle by Fernando Jackson who had a chance to stop him to prevent him from getting the first down but did not stop him. Conwell as you see hasn't really gotten all that many yards but they have so many throws. They throw so much that it's hard for a running back to establish any kind of pattern for this West Virginia team. He's been bothered a great deal by injuries. 61% of the time West Virginia puts the football in the air. Oliver Luck. Good protection over the middle to Mark Rao, the tight end. And Rao into Florida's end of the field down to the 44-yard line. Hit by Tom Wickman, number 95. He's got to be a marked man today with 61 catches on the year. Yes, and he caught a lot during the uh, latter part of the season as he comes across on the drag. The lay out there, two linebackers there to get him, but they still complete the pass. Mark Rao, who is good for that 8-10 yard pass and uh, a key man in West Virginia's attack this afternoon, as you're going to find out. It'll be second down four for the Mountaineers at the 44-yard line of the Florida Gators. Luck calling the signals. Walzak in motion. Luck going downfield and has Hollins at the 35-yard line. Rich Hollins making the catch. First down. West Virginia. And they'll spot it at the 32. He's a man who averages 21 yards per catch. Hasn't really been that much of a factor the last few games, but early in the season got some big touchdowns for him. And that time the quarterback, Oliver Luck, just read the defense, saw where the man-to-man -man coverage was, and threw the pass. He is such a, a brilliant quarterback. As you know, he almost uh, became a Rhodes Scholar just uh, a week or so ago. He was a finalist. He is now four out of four in the passing department. Number 66 for Florida is Robin Fisher, the nose guard. As the Gators are offside, which will move the Mountaineers inside the 30. It'll be a first and five at the 26. Robin Fisher doesn't make too many mistakes like that. He's another one of these all academic students. Uh, they have a lot of good students on these two football teams. Here comes Robin Fisher, just wanted to get across that line of scrimmage and do something. Now we have a second down, first and five. First and five, and Luck deep back into the pocket, sets up the screen. Wall back inside the 20, whips out of bounds near the 15-yard line. That'll be close to another first down. Mickey Walzak, 6'1", 205 from Saratoga Springs, New York. Stopped by Tony Lilly. And the Mountaineers on the move on their first possession of the day. You talk about a disciplined play. That was really excellent as you look at the statistics for Walzak. He came out on that screen. The linemen were out there at the precise time that he received the ball. He obviously yelled go. They turned up the field and he got three blocks. Hollins and Evans, the wide receivers, up at the top of your screen. First down. Conwell driving down to near the five. Dane Conwell who's been a big factor in this first drive, picking up the tough yardage. Coming back from an early season injury, he's healthy now, and he looks it. And he broke a tackle by Wilbur Marshall. Good play, and as you notice, that was kind of a counter, a cutback against the grain. This Florida defense is so quick, especially the linebackers. They will go with the first action, and if you counter back against, and there's Marshall trying to make the tackle right there, and Conwell broke the tackle on individual effort, then carried the ball with two hands, two arms around that ball, no fumble, first down. Second, Second down. and two Second from and two. the seven-yard line. West Virginia threatening. Oliver Locke back to throw. Gets rid of it. Touchdown. Fine catch by Walzak, number 42, and the Mountaineers are on the scoreboard. And you have to credit everybody with a good play on that one. Luck avoided the blitz. 
got outside the linebacker, had to throw on the run, and you'll see Walsack is wide open, and the Florida defenders are coming, but the ball got there just in time before three Florida defenders got there, and Walsack got it right in the end of the end zone. Very close play there. The back foot was in. And in college football, you only need one foot in. Extra point try upcoming. Paul Woodside, number six, will attempt. Jody McCown, the putter, is the holder. The kick is good. Seven minutes, 52 seconds left to play in the opening period. Here at Atlanta, Fulton County Stadium, West Virginia, leading Florida 7 to nothing. Oliver Luck of the Mountaineers, 6 out of 6 on the drive for 45 yards. Three of the throws to Walzak for 26. In addition to that, he rushed four times for 17. Not a bad opening drive. No, it was a beautiful drive. They mixed the plays up very well and uh, got Florida on the defense all the way. So now it's going to be up to the University of Florida to see what they can do on offense. Which side is ready to kick off for the Mountaineers? The men from Morgantown leading 7-0. Curry is deep. Ivory Curry fumbles it at the 3. Back to the 15-yard line and dives forward to around the 20. Where he's knocked out of bounds. Let's go down to the field to Dick Stockton. All right, Frank, the Florida people knew that Luck was going to move the ball on them, but they said, don't give up anything big, and when they get inside the 20, it's going to be pretty tough to grind it out. You saw what West Virginia did. They ground it out pretty good, and that's going to be a big confidence builder, also considering the turf as the Mountaineers take the early lead. Back to you. First down, Florida with the football at their 18-yard line. Wayne Peace is the quarterback as they go with one running back, Jones. He's back to throw it, goes out to Spencer Jackson, and the wide receiver is bounced out of bounds after a pickup of two or three yards. That's A.G., number 44, back there along with Steve Newberry, number 28. There's the book on the West Virginia scoring drive. That's as pretty a drive, wet or dry, as you'll see. That's about uh, six and a half yards per play in five minutes and 36 seconds. Not too bad. Luck kind of nickled and dined him to death with his passing game. Really mixed it up, moving down the field. Second down, seven. Gators with the ball just beyond their own 20-yard line. West Virginia faking the blitz. Pressure on Peace as the pass is batted up into the air. Knocked away by Todd Campbell, number 91. Todd Campbell did a good job. He saw the pass. He wasn't going to get there on the pass rush, so he just leaped up with those two long arms and batted the pass away. And West Virginia had a little blitz going on there and kind of shook up uh, Florida. Base one out of two in the early going. Florida has played in 12 bowl games. This is their first time in the beach. They are six and six in bowl action. Third down, seven. Wayne Peace. On the roll left, has good protection. This one is kicked off. Lynn Murray. And the Mountaineers will have a first down at the 13-yard line. Murray, who led the Mountaineers in interceptions. This is a team that plays very tough pass defense. Their opponents this year, just 39% against them. And Wayne Peace made a bad decision there. He could have run up the field. He tried to run, tried to, to run, to find a receiver and just throw it high enough. And Lynn Murray made the interception. It's going to be first down West Virginia. But Peace that time probably should have taken off and run with the ball. No, so the ball just beyond the 15. Oliver Luck wants to get six in a hurry. Walzak, the intended receiver, at the 15-yard line. We started to talk about the West Virginia pass defense, one of the best crews in the country. They have yielded only 39% of their opponent's passes, and that is the top mark percentage-wise in college football this year. That's not too shabby. And also, everybody has shared in the interception. Every defensive back has two interceptions across that back line, and uh, the defense has been strong all year, perhaps underrated going into this game. That is Oliver Lux's first misfire of the day. Pass actually could have been caught. He's now six out of seven. Again, back to Troy. Heavy traffic, and this one is picked off. Number 24, Kyle Knight for Florida. Well, Mr. Luck threw into some double coverage that time as Kyle Knight. You're going to see him be the short man. 
he'll be the short man underneath, and I don't think Luck saw him. You can see the double coverage on him, and Knight has the interception, and here is the ISO on the receiver as Rao goes out with the double coverage, inside, outside, short, deep, and that was not the correct man to throw the ball to, obviously, as all viewers can see. So turnovers back to back. When we come back, Florida will have the football first and 10 at their own 14 yard line, trailing seven to nothing. The Wake Up America Show, Bob Starr saying rise and shine. The Wake Up America Show, Bob Starr. Bob Starr Star doesn't get up, nobody gets up. He depends on Coast Deodorant Soap, the eye opener. No other soap refreshes like Coast with its exhilarating scent. No soap has bubblier lather. Coast brings you back to life. The Wake Up America Show, Bob Starr saying rise and shine, everybody. All you sleepyheads out there, get up, wake up. Bring yourself back to life with Coast, the eye opener. If you're ready for the thickest hair you can have, watch it wake up with Brown. To the thick, thicker, thickest it can be. Watch it wake up with Brown. Prell's fullness formula wakes up tired hair with lather that lifts and separates each strand. So your hair has all the body it needs to be its fullest, thickest, fluffiest. So watch it get thick. For really terrific hair, watch it wake up with Prell. This weekend, the playoffs. Saturday, Tampa Bay meets Dallas. Sunday, the New York Giants battle San Francisco. Catch all the excitement this weekend on CBS Sports. Great weekend of NFL divisional playoff action. We're heading back to Dallas after the game today for the Cotton Bowl tomorrow. And then, of course, Tampa Bay and the Dallas Cowboys on Saturday afternoon. So I'm going to be a... A glutton as far as my football watching goes this weekend. How, how come they get so much good football down there in Texas? They do. Of course, great one out of the West Coast. The surprising New York Giants against the 49ers. How about the way that the visiting teams have performed so far in those playoffs? Yes, it has been unbelievable. You talk about surprising Giants. The 49ers uh, ended up, what, 13-3, and three, I believe. 13-3. and three. Bill Walsh did a heck of a job. First down. Florida Gators from their 14-yard line. They've been bottled up deep in their own end of the field. Little over seven minutes left to play in the first period. Steve Miller, the tailback, gets it out to about the 18-yard line. Pick up a four, Tim Agee coming up from the secondary. Number 44 to make the stop. This young man was a walk-on. Played junior college ball in Tyler, Texas last year and walked on to Charlie Pell, says he wanted to play. And lo and behold, he's moved himself up to a starting tailback position. And he weighs about, what, 162? He's about as big as a minute. Second down, five. Florida from its 19-yard line. Trying to get something going here. Again, Miller, not much of a hole. Todd Campbell, number 91 on the stop, at about the line of scrimmage. Give him maybe one yard to the 20. And make it third down and four. Florida this year lost to Miami on a field goal that hit the crossbar and went in. The Mississippi State to Auburn and to Georgia. Mississippi State, the only team that really handled them well. Beat them 28 to 7. Third and four. Peace unloads. Spencer Jackson at the sideline. Has enough for the first down at the 27-yard line. So the Gators get their first first down to the ball game as Steve Newberry, number 28, comes up to make the stop. Fine athlete. And you can see Peace spotted the deep coverage just straight down the field. He's going to stop and take the pass. That's a sure eight, nine, ten yards. If he breaks a tackle, he could go further. And uh, Wayne Peace is very good at calling audibles, checking out defenses. And the both quarterbacks, that's one of their strong points. And he'll do that all day. First and ten for the Gators from their 28-yard line. Pitch goes to the tailback, Miller. Across the 30, out to the 33-yard line. He got four, maybe as many as five yards. On that particular play, Jeff Seals, number 80, coming up to make the stop. And we wish all of you a happy new year as well, although it is a few hours premature. A gain of six. It'll be second down four. Here's the Gators breakdown. Rush versus the pass. Just about like uh, West Virginia. 62 and 38 percent. West Virginia, 61 and 39 percent. Second and four from the 34. Brown, John L. Brown. A 
another of the Gators tailbacks close to the first down at the 38-yard line. If Florida is lacking one thing this year, it is probably the great tailback. And Charlie Fell has got an excellent recruiting pitch. Come to Florida, we're going to have a great team next year. Need a good tailback. Okay, you can see Daryl Talley, number 90. He's the man that always comes from back the backside. He's the man that will make the individual great plays for West Virginia, and they're going to have to control him if they're going to be able to score as the Gators hope to go downfield. Charlie Pell, as we said, has really done a job, and this has been a good year, but uh, next year could even be a greater year. He only has four seniors on this team as far as playing very much, six seniors total, so he's playing with a lot of freshmen, sophomores, and juniors, and that's a good sign when you're coaching college football. Yes, sir. Even Charlie admits that his team ought to be rated in the preseason top ten next year. Most coaches uh, won't yeah. admit to that. That's right. They'll lay back. Of course, you'll forget it six months from now that he told us that, I'm sure, as the season approaches. On first and ten, James Jones, hard running fullback to the 45-yard line. And that time we saw Jones back in the deep position. That's something that uh, Florida hasn't used all that much this year, having him in the deep position back in the tailback spot off of that power formation. And uh, he's a big man, 230 pounds, and he can leap. He's the best leaper on the team. So that's the reason they're putting him back there on the short yardage situation. He picked up seven on that carry. It'll be second and three for the Gators. There he is again, back at deep. their 45-yard line. Yeah, he's a good six, seven yards back from the line of scrimmage. So they're giving him a little room, giving him the football, and see if he can pick the holes. And he's close for the first down at the 47 or 48. Officials calling time here with just over four minutes remaining in the opening period. And West Virginia leading by a score of seven to nothing. Let's see if we're close enough for another measurement here. Only four out-of-staters playing on Florida's roster. That's what you call recruiting the hometown boys. Well, they have so many good football players down there. You yeah. think of high school football, you've got Florida, you got California, Texas, maybe Pennsylvania, I would think would be the top four, though not necessarily in that order. Third down in less than a yard, they give it to Jones. And he dives over the middle and should have it up. Needed just about a foot and a half. And I would think he got that. Dennis Folks, number 50, on the stop for the Mountaineers. Boy, that's what you call power football. They had the tight end back there, the other remaining back, and they're just leading the way through the hole. That's what you call uh, bulldozing your way with James Jones, the tail man. This is the first football meeting ever between these two schools. You can see first and ten. Chris Faulkner, number 80 there, is one of the blocking backs. Gators at their own 48-yard line. Nice fake this time by Keith, who flips, almost goes down, gets rid of the pass, and completes it. Run out of bounds near the 45-yard line is Jones. And that's another Florida first down. The officials will spot it at the 41 of West Virginia. That was a great individual effort by Wayne Peace. He was in trouble out there. It looked like it was going to be wide open. They had the coverage downfield, and he'll slip on his way back there. And that was Jeff Seals who was after him. Put the tackle on him. He was able to complete the pass. A good play by Wayne Peace. And the receiver was uh, Malarkey, and not Jones. So give Mike Malarkey the tight end credit. We get a timeout. It's the Florida Gators on the move with a first down at the West Virginia 41 with three minutes, 15 seconds left in the opening period. Frank Lieber with Johnny Morris and Dick Stockton from Atlanta's Fulton County Stadium. Late in the first period, Florida trailing West Virginia 7-0 as Wayne Peace, the sophomore quarterback, ducks into the huddle. You know, he's had two great games in his many years against Georgia. They haven't quite been able to pull it out. And I'm sure the Georgia people would be happy if they never see Wayne Peace again. Same goes through on the opposite side for Herschel Walker. James Jones on the carry down to the 38-yard line. What did uh, Charlie Pell tell us yesterday about Herschel Walker? <laughs> his, his last thought on his deathbed? Yeah, he says if he dies and when he dies, he'll always remember Herschel Walker running the football. That 95-yard drive that Georgia pulled off to pull that game out. But Peace had two tremendous passing years against them. You can tell that he's a football man when he's dying and thinking football. That's right. Second down seven. Gators with the football at the Mountaineer 38. Peace loses the football, can't find it, and West Virginia recovers. 
Buccaneers, number 91, Todd Campbell, comes up with the ball as it slipped out of Peace's hands, and he simply couldn't find it. He didn't know where it went. I don't know how slippery or wet the ball was. They changed it quite often, as you can see the fake pitch. Put his arm up, and the ball just slipped out as he went right through his motion. And there comes Campbell to make the recovery for West Virginia. Florida's getting some tough breaks early. Second turnover for the Mountaineers as they recover on their 48-yard line. Oliver Luck ending up off the middle. Number 32, Dane Conwell. The fullback bruises across the 50 to the 48, pick up a four. Now Oliver Luck uh, takes the signals in from the sidelines from, from uh, Rush Jakes or sometimes they will send the play in, but he always has an option for an audible. They give him two ways to go, and many of their plays are changes at the line of scrimmage. 50% of the time, as you look at the giveaway-takeaway ratio there. Second down, let's call it five for the first down with the ball at the 47-yard line. Luck with a nice fake, rolling out to his right. Gonna keep it. Dives forward for the first down at the 42-yard line of Florida. Alonzo Johnson, number 93, coming up on the stop. This is a very interesting young man. Oliver Luck, he's a two-time academic All-American, wants to be a lawyer, was a Rhodes Scholar nominee, one of 11 National Football Foundation Hall of Fame scholar athletes. When you're thinking about a, a scholar athlete, I think this is a guy you're, you're talking about, right? The perfect example. And he was actually a finalist. And notice here how he gets under Alonzo Johnson. He doesn't run all that much, but he dipped under, and he's run more in this game than he has in the last two or three games. I figure, they figure that it's uh, the peach ball. All back up the middle to the 35-yard line, sliding for the last three or four. That's a pickup of seven, second and three. And to finish my sentence, I figured it's the Peach Bowl last game of his collegiate season, and they'll let him run a little bit if they can cross Florida up. West Virginia normally alternates tailbacks. They play three of them, but I think Walzak is going so strong right now, they don't want to do anything. Well, he's catching the ball, running the ball well, and he's blocked well, so why change? Second and three from the 37-yard line of the Florida Gators. West Virginia on the move. Conwell over the right side. Down to the 33, close for a first down. Let's go down to Dick Stockton. All right, here's Todd Campbell to recover the fumble. Well, you guys are aroused. What's going on here? Well, we're just trying to get after it. You know, we got to get after the quarterback, keep pressure on him, and we're trying to do that all day. You kind of audit Florida with their speed and their reputation coming into this game. You felt you were an underdog? No, not really, because, you know, we don't think we're an underdog going in any game. We just know play. Okay, upstairs. Third down, less than a yard for the first down. West Virginia from the 33 of the Florida Gators. They've been opening the holes for Conwell, and he'll be close for the first down at the 32-yard line. One of the more interesting matchups in the trenches, West Virginia's right tackle offensively, Keith Jones, who's regarded as a great pro prospect against uh, number 85 of Florida, uh, David Galloway. Galloway goes, well, he's gone as high as 285. They say he's down to about 269 right now. He's one of the few seniors on the Florida team and a surefire pro prospect. Uh, that's pretty good size, 6'3", 274. And you're going to see some of him uh, before this football game is over. And this is a big game, not only to win. It's a first down. Not only to win for these football players, but the pros are watching him. There are no games to uh, interfere. The scouts aren't all over the country like they are during the regular season. They're watching these players play in this Peach Bowl, and it means a lot to them. And every one of them knows that there's a lot of eyes on them. That's what creates the pressure for a football player. It's nothing like it. You're playing in public eye. You make a mistake, everybody sees it. Seconds ticking away, and they do not get the playoff before the quarter ends. So the two teams will change ends of field here at the end of one period of play at the 14th annual Peach Bowl game at Atlanta Fulton County Stadium in Atlanta, Georgia. Florida trailing West Virginia 7-0. Virginia Mountaineers on the move. First down at the Florida 31. Oliver Luck dropping back the throw. Swing pass to Walzak and caught this time behind the line of scrimmage. Tony Lilly, number 18, coming up quickly from the Florida secondary to make the stop at about the line of scrimmage. Florida trying to get itself fired up and you see Lilly there. He's a former punt, pass, and kick champion back when he was 9, 10 years old. Went to the Super Bowl and got to meet Bob Lilly. 
who is a very distant relative, but he said that was one of the thrills of his life was to, to meet Bob Willey, the former Dallas Cowboy, at a Super Bowl game. I believe that was 1972. Loss of a yard in the play. Call it second down, 11 for the Mountaineers. Backed up to their 30, or rather to the Florida 32. Luck in trouble behind the line. Gets back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe got a yard. But you take it back to the original line of scrimmage. Third and 10. Wilbur Marshall, number 88, made the stop. And he's an interesting story. Young man who came to Florida as a tight end. They asked him to play linebacker. He had one spring practice under his belt. And he has turned out to be a demon linebacker. Wilbur Marshall, number 88 of the Florida Gators. Third down, 10. Obviously, he looked for luck to put it in the air. He's been very successful. Seven out of nine. Protection is good. Gets the pass away. Incomplete at the 15-yard line. The intended receiver was Wayne Brown. And Ivory Curry, number 26, put the hit on him. And a good hit by Avery Curry, and his reputation is he'll hit you. He proved it on that play because the pass was there. It should have been caught, but the jolt by Curry is the only thing that prevented the reception. Line of scrimmage is the 32. The field goal attempt will be from 49 yards away on a wet field by Paul Woodside. And his longest, as you can see, is 33. So this is 16 yards beyond his longest. High snap. It's up. It's a little short, just under the crossbar. He was straight on, but not quite enough leg. The Woodside, who was a walk-on at West Virginia, fails on the field goal attempt. Florida takes over, first down at their 32. Texas Longhorns of Fred Akers. And you can watch it from the Cotton Bowl, one of the great New Year's Day classics. And Charlie Pell used to play for Bear Bryant, didn't he, a long time ago? Seemed to me every coach in America did one time. You run into so many of them who have been assistants on that staff. First and ten, Florida. Gators at their 32-yard line. Trying to get a drive going. Wayne leads the handoff to Miller. Bounces off the tackle behind the line. He's dropped a big loss. Back at the 23-yard line. It looks like Florida, or rather, I should say West Virginia, has now gone to five defensive backs, which is something that they do... At other than passing situations. Okay, it was Todd Campbell here who really jammed up this play. He's the one that deserves most of the credit. And finally, it was Stemple who came up to, to make the tackle. And he's the fifth defensive back, and they're a nickel defense that they'll do sometimes on first or second down, not just passing situations. A loss of seven at his second down, 17, with the ball back at the 23-yard line. Blitz. There's the blitz. He's trying to get away from it. Throws on the rock. And the pass is incomplete at the 40-yard line. Trying to hit Spencer Jackson, number 89, the wide receiver. And back covering Steve Newberry, number 28. Cedric King blitz, blitz from the back side, and he must have said, oh, no, what a time to blitz because he went the other way, and he had no chance to get to him. But he did at least uh, put a little pressure on. It'll be third down and 17. Florida from its own 23-yard line. Peace is three out of six for 21 yards. But the Gators have not been able to move the football. They've not been across the 50-yard line yet. That's Miller, the tailback, in motion. Wayne Cruz again flips back at the 10-yard line and drops at the eight. Don Stemple, the fifth. Defensive back came from the outside and put the pressure on with a safety blitz. West Virginia fans love it, and there are a bunch of them here, 14,000 of them. He saw them coming from both sides, but from the right, it was Stemple, number 35 here, that forced him to go to the left, and then they put their clamps on him, and down he went. Two-man tackle, and Florida in tough shape. Joe Barakavich running out of the end zone. The kick coming up a little bit short, taken by Reggie Armstead, and Armstead carries it back to the 33, so West Virginia coming up with excellent field position. On this change, Chad, uh, thanks to the rush of their defense, what a job they did. Time out, early in the second period with 11.59 left to play in the first half. Hey, these West Virginia fans 
know how to celebrate when their team gets into a bowl game. I thought they were playing the game in the hotel lobby last night. Well, there's 15,000 of them here in Atlanta, and I would swear that maybe there's twice that many, at least in our hotel, was mobbed, and uh, they're out here in full strength. Chances are the uh, weather may be better back home than it is here. I don't know. West Virginia with a first down, and Conwell, 25, and down to the 23, a pickup of nine on that play. For the fullback, Conwell, and the Mountaineers so far have taken the play away from the Florida Gators, both that, offensively and defensively. And that was sort of a counter draw against the flow of the action because Florida will pursue so much, and the hole just opened wide open. Good block by Dave Johnson, the center, number 57. And finally, the Gators got to him, but not before he made a nice gain, and I believe it's second and one and a half. That it is from the 23-yard line of the Florida Gators. Oliver Luck at the throttle of the West Virginia Express. Walzak. First down at the 18-yard line. Dickie Walzak, the tailback. Play it been whistled dead. When the ball came out, it'll be a first down, West Virginia. And a nice block by Conwell. They blocked well for him on the play before, and he uh, reciprocated with a nice, nice block for Walzak. Oliver Luck this year had the first, or I should say in his career, has had the first, third, and fourth best passing years in West Virginia history. He set records just about every year. Again, Conwell, the fullback, driving inside the 15 to the 14-yard line. And Florida, apparently powerless, trying to stop him as Lilly comes up from the secondary to make yet another tackle. And as they say, when the guys in the secondary have to make the tackles, you're in big trouble. That's right. I don't think a lot of people expected uh, the Mountaineers to be able to run up the middle this well against that big, strong, fast Florida defensive line. They figured that if West Virginia was going to have success, it was going to be luck and rolling out and all kinds of passes. They have had that, but they have been successful up the middle, too. Second and six from the 14-yard line of Florida. Walzak, this time caught behind the line of scrimmage. They needed a big defensive play, and they got it. Marshall, number 88, came flowing through there. Along with number 49, Fernando Jackson. To make the stop for a loss back at the 18, loss of four, it'll be third and 10. Here's Wilbur Marshall, the young man who came as a tight end, had two pretty good football players in front of him. They said, in effect, uh, you want to play football here, you might consider switching to linebacker, and he did. And he's turned into a great linebacker. On third and 10, luck. Pass intended for Wayne Brown, number 19, falling short. I don't know if somebody got a piece of that or not. Charlie Pell in his third year at Florida after spending two years at Clemson doing a great job at that program. In fact, the guys who are seniors now at Clemson will be playing in the Orange Bowl, ranked number one in the country, were recruited by Charlie Pell. Although he gives, obviously, all of the credit to Dan Ford, his former assistant, for doing the great job. Here's Woodside on to try a 35-yard field goal attempt. McCown puts it down. The kick is long enough. It is Good. Paul Woodside nails it from 35 yards away. And the West Virginia Mountaineers lead the Florida Gators 10-0. 9.38 left in the first half. A reminder to spend New Year's Eve with CBS on Happy New Year America, starring Donny Osmond and Marilyn McCoo at the Waldorf Astoria. Don and Bills with the traditional Times Square Ball. The Pointer Sisters with Les Brown and his band of renown in Las Vegas and Mickey Gilley and the Urban Cowboy Band from Pasadena, Texas. Great way to usher in the new year starting at 11.30, 10.30 Central tonight on CBS. Woodside to kick, Ivory Curry, number 26 is the deep man. West Virginia leading by a score of 10 to nothing. Curry fields this one at the 8. Back to the 15, 20, 25, 30. Curry stopped just short of the 40-yard line. Good job of running back the football as Steve Newberry, number 28, made the stop. As Ivory Curry doubles as a kick returner and a defensive back. West Virginia's schedule, they say, was not as tough as Florida's. They played some pretty good folks. They finished 8-3, their best year since 75. And their losses were just pretty good football teams. Pittsburgh and Penn State, two of the losses, I'd say they're pretty good. And the other to Syracuse. First and 10, Florida. 
with the football at its 38-yard line. Wayne Peace, sideline throw. Spencer Jackson pulls it down at the 45-yard line for a pickup of six. Call it seven. It'll be second down and three for Florida. That was obviously a checkoff, but you can see he goes straight down the field about eight yards. The only man they have to worry about is Lynn Murray, number two. He's the safety, and he sometimes will spot that and come over. He could pick that off out in the flat. He doesn't have to worry about the cornerback. He has to worry about the safety on that. Pretty good use of the left hand there by Spencer Jackson. Second down, long three for the first down. They go up the middle to Steve Miller, the tailback. He gets the first down, spinning out of the tackle near the 50-yard line. Dave O'Black, number 55, the nose guard, made the tackle for West Virginia. Fourth time for the Mountaineers in the Peach Bowl. They are 2-1 and one in this game. Here we're talking about Oliver Luck and his academic credentials. Florida has seven players who made first team all academic Southeast Conference, including this young man, their quarterback, Wayne Peace. From the 49, they go with the reverse to Jackson. Jackson to the 50-yard line, and when all is said and done, he'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about it. The reverse going from Peace to the tailback, Steve Miller, who handed it to Spencer Jackson, the flanker. And the man they didn't feel was Cedric King. You're going to see number 15. Now, it's a good idea. It was a real good idea. Come back on the reverse to keep him honest. But watch number 15 come through here and make the initial hit. Pretty good play by West Virginia and staying home. Staying home where you're supposed to be. Second down, 10. John L. Brown has replaced Miller at the tailback. on the delay. Handing off to Lorenzo Hampton, number seven, who has just come into the game. He's the second string fullback. And Dennis Folks, number 50, makes the stop for the Mountaineers. And uh, Jeff Dean was also in on that. Number 41. Good tackle. Good tackle. Loss in the play back to the 47. It'll be third down. Let's call it 12 for the first down for the Florida Gators. They have been across the 50-yard line once. Here in the first half. He's trying to loosen up the West Virginia defense. Flag down as the pass flung out of the far side to Howard Akers, number six. Got back to about the line of scrimmage. Steve Newberry, number 28, uncovered. Let's see what the penalty is about. Going to go against Florida. And one thing you may have noticed is that Florida's gotten away from a lot of the motion and that they've uh, simplified things, put in three wide receivers there. Vance Carlson, the referee with the indication. I tell you, West Virginia's so pumped up here. It's a putting situation, but they're in effect saying, ah, let's shove them back, we can stop them anyway. And give them third down over, we get a little better field position. Well, I think they're trying to decide as to whether uh, Florida would try and go for a first down from a with a about three yards to go or so They probably wouldn't so I would imagine they would refuse the penalty Well Now we'll get the call here from the referee Vance Carlson You have to wonder because it's uh, a big walk-off. It's a fifth It's 15 a big yard. penalty and puts them way back But uh, they did have a fourth down and about three or four situation and it would be we have kind of foolish to uh, Florida to down not remains punt. the same third well, that's confidence in your defense, Well, oh, that right? really is. That's what I was saying. Those West Virginia guys were so pumped up out there. They're saying, shove them back 15. We'll get better field position. We'll stop them anyway. Well, now they're looking at third down, but they've got a ton to go. They've got to get all the way down to the 40-yard line, the opposite end of the field for the first down. So they're looking at some 27 yards for the first. Timeout. We'll be back in Atlanta in just a moment. He is too good. Welcome back to Atlanta and the 14th annual Peach Bowl game. As you look at Charlie Pell, who's on a rough first half, the head coach of the Florida Gators, his team trailing by a score of 10 to nothing. Charlie's 40 years old. Young man with the headset there is Lee Griff. He coaches the wide receivers. Third down. And about 25 for the first down. Peace. Fires it downfield, completes it to Akers, but still way short of the yardage needed for the first down. 
they wound up about where they would have been had they refused a penalty. Yes, and actually before it was actually 4th and 13 rather than 4th and 3, which was even more surprising that they uh, decided to take the penalty. At any rate, it's going to be West Virginia's ball in a second. As Joe Farkavich prepares to punt. He's punted twice so far, averaging. Well, he kicked it 42 yards the first time, 34 the second. Drury is deep. Willie Drury signaling for the fair catch, lets it sail over his head, and the Gators will down it inside the five-yard line, right on the five. Let's go down to the field of Dick Stockton. You know, Frank, uh, everybody is puzzled on the West Virginia bench as to why they took that penalty, but obviously it worked for them. In seven of the 11 games the Mountaineers played, the starting quarterback on the opposition was out for one reason or another. They didn't play a tough schedule, as Frank said, but they're obviously rising to the occasion today, but they got a long way to go, and we'll find out what the Florida defense is all about on this drive that's about to start. Back to you. Well, a lot of people figured, Dick, that the uh, Florida defense, and particularly that strong defensive line, would be able to put some pressure on Oliver Luck, a West Virginia quarterback. It hasn't happened so far. He's 7 out of 11. West Virginia sticking to the ground game as Dane Conwell gets it out to the 7-yard line. Not much there. Dave Galloway with the big, big tackle right inside. That was the kind of a play where you can see where Galloway shines. He just threw off the blocker, made the tackle. Nealon, the West Virginia coach, shuttles in some play, signals others in from the bench. Again, Conwell. We're about to 10 for a pickup of three. It'll be third down five as Tom Wigman, number 95, comes up from the Florida linebacker position to make the stop. Florida, Charlie Pell told us, runs from 90 different formations, and Pell estimated that West Virginia has used better than 100 different formations this season. That's what you call offensive football, wide open, have fun. However, Florida has not used that many formations this game. Third down, a little less than five for the first down. And they stick on the ground, and they're going to have to punt. Curlin Beck, number 20, who has replaced Walzak at the tailback position, takes it out to the 12. Looks like they'll be at least a yard, maybe two, short of the first down. And punting from deep in their own territory. Their punter is Jody McCown. Ivory Curry, who returned the kickoffs, is also the punt return man for Florida. West Virginia's punting game hasn't been all that strong. McCown tries to punt away from the returner. He's not a real high punter. Nailed it at the 50-yard line. Ivory Curry at the 22. First down, Florida. Good run back by Ivory Curry, and it was Jody McCown, the punter, who had to make the saving tackle as Curry headed for the sidelines, broke one tackle, and there it is, 21. McCown has to make the saving tackle, so he earned the trip on that one. He had to make the punt and then make the tackle, but Florida, the Gators, in good field position. 27 yards on the return and a first down. For the Florida Gators at the West Virginia 23. This is their deepest penetration of the afternoon. He's sending Spencer Jackson wide to the left side. He's got B. Lang split to the right. Miller. About a yard to the 20-yard line. At West Virginia, front wall is doing a great job. Darrell Talley, number 20, or the number 90, making the stop. On Miller. On some of those plays, I noticed the blocks aren't being held quite long enough, and it would seem to me, as we talked at the top of the show, they might be able to get the, the better four or five, six yards and giving it to the up back, letting James Jones carry a little bit more. But you can see he's so far up that you know that he's not going to carry the ball. At least I don't think he is. Second and eight from the 20 yard line. Less than four minutes remaining in the first half. Great penetration by number 35 of West Virginia, the extra defensive back. Don Stemple from Vienna, West Virginia. Big play. Yes, he's a hard-nosed kid, and they're not afraid to bring him in, even on running situations. When you bring in that fifth defensive back, they say you hurt yourself. But he comes in across from that actually a strong safety position, makes the great tackle. And Florida now 
in a long passing situation. Let's see what they do. Third down, 14, as the Mountaineers have shoved them back to the 26-yard line. Their biggest success so far has been when Peace rolled out. Peace is five out of eight the 39 yards. The sophomore scrambling and nailed for the loss by Dennis Polk, number 50. And once again, the Mountaineers have risen to the occasion. Dennis Florida wound up with great field position at the 22, and after three downs, they wind up back on the 35. Let's give Dave Oblak some credit. Number 55, who puts the force on forces, he's to run out. There's 55 forcing him into Dennis Folks for the tackle, so that's really two men deserve credit on that. The nose guard did a good job. Brian Clark is the field goal kicker. This will be a 50-yard attempt. He is a great professional prospect. In fact, Charlie Pell says he is the first kicker he has ever seen who is a team leader. Bad snap. Clark comes up with it and just throws the ball into the middle of the line. West Virginia will take over at the 38-yard line. You saw number five, Jim Ganey, try to pull down that high snap. And Clark never got a chance. Strong defense by the Mountaineers. Oblak doing a great job up the middle again. Let's take a look as the ball was a little bit high and it looked like it was a little bit too hard. And Clark, he says, I don't know what to do with that ball. Maybe I'll just throw it. And he threw it. I don't know where he was throwing it, but he wanted to get rid of it before he got tackled. But anyway, it was Oblak on the recovery. West Virginia's ball. The Mountaineers are really playing some football. First down at their 40-yard line. Oliver Luck. Curlin Beck going outside. Close to a first down. Let's go down to Dick Stockton. You know, Frank, you were talking about Dave Oblak. He had such severe knee surgery. No one thought he was going to play again. The only thing is no one told him. And he worked and he worked and he came back. He's a group of people from Cleveland, Ohio, and they're very tough players indeed. There is no question that West Virginia has the impetus, and they are playing like they're from the Southeast Conference and not the University of Florida, a team that's struggling. Back to you. Second down, less than a yard for the first down. Luck handing off to Beck. 45-40. And down to the 38-yard line of the Florida Gators. First down for the Mountaineers. You know, reflecting on that West Virginia defense. They come on the field with Florida with the football at the 22, and they give it back to their offense on the 40. That's not bad. That's what you call good defense, and Andre Gist is uh, doing a very nice job, number 58. We'll keep our eye on him. He's pulling out every time and throwing good blocks in the last two or three plays. One minute and 40 seconds left to play in the first half. Here kind of a job Luck does in guiding the Mountaineers down the field for another score. Sticking on the ground right now, but if he's going to go for another score, time is going to get away. Mickey Walzak carries to the 36-yard line. Now Don Nealon, the Mountaineers coach, recruits quite a bit of the Ohio area. Quite a few Ohio players. Of course, he grew up there, coached there to begin with. As luck comes over to the sidelines for a, work, for a word with Nealon, he is going to miss that fella next year. Yes, they, uh, actually their second string quarterback right now is a freshman, and if anything happened to, to Luck today, they would be uh, in trouble as far as experience-wise. Here's a young man who wanted to become a Rhodes Scholar, didn't make it, now is thinking of pro football. We mentioned a great football weekend coming up on CBS, the pro playoffs, divisional playoffs, Saturday, Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Dallas Cowboys. Cowboys favorites in that game, but the visiting team's been doing very well this year in the NFL playoffs. And Doug Williams is on a roll, it would appear. On Sunday, of course, talking about upstarts, how about the New York Giants? As that great defensive club goes out to Candlestick Park to take on the San Francisco 49ers. First time in the playoffs for the Giants since, since 1963 when they were bounced by the Chicago Bears, 14 to 10. I was talking to some people back in Dallas the other day, and they were saying, you were the Cowboys, and back in training camp, someone told you you'd be down to the final four with a chance to go to the Super Bowl, and the only teams in your way would be San Francisco, the New York Giants, and Tampa Bay. You'd, be, you'd have to feel pretty good. You'd have a big smile on your face. All right. Watch out. Second and 10. Luck on the quarterback draw. Down to the 30. Really took a shot and drives forward to the 26-yard line. 
We are talking to Gil Brandt, the super scout of the Dallas Cowboys yesterday. He told us, in his opinion, Luck will be drafted early, say in the first two, uh, three rounds or so. Watch number 73, Keith Jones. He'll come downfield and there's nobody to block. It's so open. There's 73. Say, where are they all? He didn't even have to throw a block. There was such a big hole. He took a real shot there. Oliver Luck. Back to live action. Luck hitting Walzak with a swing pass behind the line of scrimmage and short yardage for the running back as he carries to the 25. One minute left to play in the first half and counting. One of the surprises in this game has to be the fact that Luck is running the ball so much. He has not been a running quarterback. Second down, nine from the 25 of Florida. Luck looking for the sideline throw. It fires it over the head of Gary Mullen, number one, the freshman, the intended receiver. That stops the clock with 46 seconds remaining in the half. And West Virginia leading Florida by a score of 10 to nothing. Gators with a golden opportunity to put some points on the scoreboard a few moments ago, thrown back by the stubborn Mountaineer defense. Lots of interesting things happening at halftime. You'll get a look at the bands, both sides of the field, talk to the coaches. Give you an idea of what to expect in the year that lies ahead from CBS Sports. So stay with us. Third down, eight. Virginia from the Florida 25. Luck with the fake into the middle. Oliver Luck going long, deep into the end zone, intended for Rich Hollins. And Luck wound up on the seat of his pants. Pretty good rush that time by the Florida Gators. So a field goal situation presents itself for Woodside, who's kicked one from 35, one out of two. And that's his longest of the year, 35 yards. Didn't we say he had 33, 33 was, his, was his, longest. his longest? Coming in. 39 seconds left to play in the first half. Ball will be spotted at the 32, so this will be a 42-yard effort, and this would be his longest of the year if he makes it. Flag is down. The kick is long enough. It is good. However, there's a penalty marker down in the field. Woodside drills it from 42 yards. The holder, Jody McCowan, who's the putter, really took a shot. Here's the referee, Vance Carlson. Offside against Florida. That obviously will be declined. They'll take the field goal. They want to think that, think it over because they had a fourth and nine. They're thinking about, he says, wait a minute, wait a minute. He wants to check out the situation to see if they could change Offside, the fourth down. Offside, Florida, declined, field goal count. That was good by Oliver Luck. He wanted to make sure the situation before he uh, declined the penalty. So it is 13-0. Had they taken the penalty, they still wouldn't have had the first down. Right. It would have been a fourth and three. So Woodside, whose longest kick this year, 33, has now kicked him from 35 and 42. And West Virginia leads 13 to nothing with 34 seconds left to play in the first half. And going into this game, it was Florida with the strong kicking game as opposed to the Mountaineers. So you never know what's going to happen. You know, next year is the 50th anniversary of the Southeastern Conference. And Florida has never won a Southeast Conference title. And they, they may get there next year or be awful close. They start out with a real tough schedule next year. I know that. I know they play USC early, but... Uh, and Miami, they open with Miami. They've got a very tough schedule. LSU. they lot, got a lot of people coming back. They have a lot of people coming back. West Virginia, same thing. They've got Oklahoma on their early schedule. Ivory Curry is deep. Woodside kicking off high. And Curry fields it at the 8. Back to the 20. And down at the 27-yard line, we got a loose ball. The Mountaineers have recovered it. Curry fumbling when hit. And let's see if we can pick up who picked it up. Look to be number 26. That's Alan Moreland off the special unit of West Virginia. And the Mountaineers will have a chance to put some more points on the board with 30 seconds left to play in the half. It looked like it was kind of a late fumble. Let's take a look as Curry comes up. He's hit. I heard a lot of whistles, but finally he's down. The ball comes out just as he was ready to hit the ground. First down from the Florida 28. Oliver Luck going for six intended for number 19. 
Wayne Brown, the rookie, or I should say, freshman wide receiver. Rookie in college play, of course. Collins, another wide receiver, being sent in by Nealon with the next play. Better get used to this college football on CBS. You're going to be seeing a lot more of it in 1982. NCAA football for the first time since 1963 on CBS. Second down, 10. Penalty markers down. Luck off the fingertips of his tight end, Mark Rao. The thing about Rao, they've held him in check pretty well. He's caught only one pass for seven yards. Well, they're waiting for him when he comes across there on that drag. There was a penalty against uh, West Virginia, I believe. It looked like uh, maybe Hollins might have left the line of scrimmage a little bit too soon. So the option lies here with the Florida Gators. They have seven captains, including number 49, Fernando Jackson. He's talking things over with the referee, Vance Carlson. I think the decision here is to is whether they would want to take the penalty to force them back further because there's only 17 seconds and the down well, situation is not that important. West Virginia. It's the field goal situation. Second down. That moves it back to the 32-yard line. It'll be second down, 15. But the clock obviously a factor now with 17 seconds left to play in the half. West Virginia leading, surprising a lot of folks. With their play here in the first half, 13 to nothing. Rao, the tight end, 85, is dragging a lot of people out of the middle. It seems like a delay with the back over the middle would be good. Could be. They're paying too much attention to him. Luck. Good rush this time by the Gators. Gets it away. Intended for number three, Billy Evans. Cutting across the field at the five-yard line. Back defending was Lilly, number 18. Charlie Pell says Lilly is about as good a safety as he's seen in his day. And they're not going to mess around. They're going to go for their uh, field goal shot right now, I believe. 12 seconds. Showing on the clock. Which side is in there? Hard to tell because this stadium is completely enclosed. Circular, bowl type stadium. Which way the wind is blowing. This is going to be a 50-yard effort. He's two out of three. Hitting from 35 and 42 yards. This one. Oh, it's going to be close. Yeah, made it. It just got over the crossbar from 50 yards out, and Whitside is being bombed. What a half of football for Whitside. The three longest kicks of his career. Coming in the first half of this game. 35, 42, and now 50 yards. And he had only kicked four of seven coming into this game. He wasn't even the starting kicker early in the season. You are right, and that makes a big difference on the score. 16-nothing instead of 13. That's three scores, at least for Florida. Well, Woodside has done a job for his coach, Don Nealon, and the Mountaineers today. Most people figured, as you said, that Florida would have the edge in the kicking game with Brian Clark, who's a great senior kicker. But it hasn't happened. He's hit three out of four. Six seconds left to play in the half, so this should be the final play of the first half. They're giving Woodside credit for a 49-yarder on that last attempt, and that, by the way, is a new Peach Bowl record for distance. Up the middle it comes. Picked up by Scott Marshall. Fumble. Time has run out. West Virginia recovers the fumble, but the clock has run out. Here in the first half, as the Mountaineers, Reggie Armstead, number 24, came up with the ball. A great first half of football for West Virginia, as they lay Florida 16 to nothing, and their fans are going mad. They love it. Now let's go down to the field. Dick Stockton and the West Virginia coach, Don Nealon. It was never this much fun with Bo Schemmeckler, was it, in Michigan? Oh, yeah, it really was, <laughs> sometimes. Two years it's taken to bring Don Nealon and the Mountaineers back into the bowl picture, and what a shocker it is. You're totally dominating this Florida club. I know in your wildest dreams you didn't expect it to be like this at halftime. What's behind it, Don? Well, I think our kids, you know, came down here. A lot of folks didn't think we could play football, and, you know, our kids kind of felt they could. 
But let me say this to you, this game's a long way from being over because that's a great football team in the other locker room and we're going to have to play better the second half. Scores nothing, nothing right now. Don, do the conditions have any effect going into this game? It seems to me that Florida, team that likes to throw a crisp team, not used to this weather, not to take anything away from your effort, a little tentative. What do you think? Well, I'll be honest, we were hoping for a little cold weather, and I didn't mind the rain, to be honest about it. I was happy they had the field covered, but, you know, we like to throw as much as Florida, so uh, we'll just have to wait and see. Hey, yeah, that's a nice walk-on field goal kicker you had, huh? I love it. Paul Woodside. Thank you, Don. See you later. Well, he's sky high, as his Mountaineer team is. A 50-yard field goal, three out of four, as Frank Lieber has told you about, and Oliver Luck coolly and calmly has directed the West Virginia Mountaineers to a 16-0 lead over Florida in a game no one expected at this point here in the 14th annual Peach Bowl. Well, we'll return with halftime activities from the Peach Bowl after this commercial message from the Peach Bowl. Kemper. And by the U.S. Army. The Army, a great place to be all you can be. Welcome back to the Peach Bowl in Atlanta, Georgia. Frank Lieber along with Johnny Morris and our colleague Dick Stockton. And thanks to Dick for the fine job on the halftime show as we near the start of the second half of play. You and I were just looking over the statistics. And there's actually a couple that jump out at you. That yard rushing statistic for Florida and also the turnovers. That's right. Minus 12 yards for the Gators. So West Virginia has really shut down the running attack of Florida. And total yards, 148 for West Virginia, only 27 for Florida. That's in an entire half, so you can see how well the West Virginia defense has done. Look at the turnovers, five for the Gators, one for West Virginia. And if you uh, just take a look at stats, a lot of times stats will tell you a story. Florida has fumbled 34 times this year, whereas West Virginia has fumbled only 16 times. And, of course, today, four big ones for Florida. So that's part of the story and the West Virginia defense and West Virginia is going to get the ball to begin this first half. Brian Second half, Clark I should say. Yeah. Couldn't be the first uh, half, good. could it? Good and very well. You start New Year's Eve a little early, aren't you, Jeff? That's right. Uh, i kind of looking forward to New Year's Eve. Ryan Clark will kick it off, the senior veteran. Well, the Florida Gators, Armstead is deep and so is Drury. Willie Drury, who has been the prime kick return man for West Virginia. Dylan Armstead, let's keep it going now. This young man has not missed an extra point in his entire Southeast Conference career. 62 straight extra points, Brian Clark. This one goes into and out of the end zone. Touchback. So the Mountaineers will take over on their 20. Let's meet the members of the Florida defense. David Galloway, left defensive tackle, Tampa, Florida. Robin Fisher, nose guard, Satellite Beach, Florida. Will Harris, right defensive tackle, winner guard in Florida. Emmanuel Jackson, inside linebacker, Bluntstown, Florida. Tom Wigman, inside linebacker, Jacksonville Beach, Florida. Alonzo Johnson, outside linebacker, Panama City, Florida. Over Marsh, outside linebacker from Titusville, Florida. First and ten, West Virginia with the football from their 20, Mark Rao. The receiver latching onto that pass from Oliver Luck. Now let's take a look at the defensive backfield for the Florida Gators who started the game. Bruce Vaughn, cornerback, Seminole, Florida. Ivory Curry, right cornerback, Miami, Florida. Sonny Gilliam, Miami, strong safety. Tony Lilly, free safety, Woodbridge, Virginia. Luck is now 9 out of 17. Charlie Fell hoping perhaps he's turned things around here in the second half for his Gators. On second and six, Conwell has another first down as West Virginia continues to grind it out. Dane Conwell, he's made a very big difference. Leading rusher in this game in the first half with 43 yards in 10 attempts. First down for the Mountaineers at their 31-yard line. The field goal, by the way, by Woodside, the last one, the 49-yarder not only set a Peach Bowl record, but tied a West Virginia school record. The old Peach Bowl record was 42, so he eclipsed that by seven yards. First and 10 for the Mountaineers, who lead it 16 to nothing. Flagged down as it looked like Florida jumped offside. Walzak on the carry over the right side for short yardage out to the 33-yard line. 
It looked like David Galloway may have jumped off sides for Florida, which will put West Virginia in a pretty good spot. They have done a pretty good job containing uh, Galloway, number 85, the All-American defensive tackle for Florida. He has not been uh, evident on that many tackles. We have offside, Florida, first down. Vance Carlson, himself a veteran postseason bowl official. I believe it's starting to mist again, isn't it? Yes, slightly. It just poured down. Started the middle of the night, finally stopped about two hours before kickoff. First and five, West Virginia from the 35. Good job that time of the Florida defense stacking up Conwell at about the line of scrimmage. Wilbur Marshall was in on that tackle. Number 88 just came across and made a, a great play. A man that can, there's Wayne Peace, the quarterback. Wayne was five out of eight. One interception in the first half for 39 yards but never really got the attack going. The defense penetration to the 22, that was set up by a turnover, and then the defense of West Virginia pushed the Gators all the way back to the 40 and handed the ball back to their offense. Second and five. Luck. Wide open is Walzak at the 40, 45, 50. Walzak hurdles the tackler and is inside the 35-yard line. Mickey Walzak in his last regular season game caught 12 and has done a great job this afternoon. That's his sixth reception of the day. And he has an option when he comes out on that play and it was so open he just turned around and, and Luck hit him with the pass right away. There's a Mountaineer and he's got to be happy. Watch Walzak, number 42 goes out. There had to be a mistake there in the defense for Florida because nobody was even over there and he just dipped to the outside, made the grab and turned off down the field and West Virginia in scoring territory once again, Mickey Walzak, he is having quite a game. 32 yards on the play in the first half for the Mountaineers at the Florida Gators, 32 yard line. Evans in motion across the backfield, Luck handing off and Curlin Becker inside the 30 to the 28 yard line, number 20. There's a flag down on the field. I bet we're going to see Walzak catch a few more out there in the flat because they have a real good pattern where he comes out, as I mentioned, and they give him the option of going out or in or stopping short, wherever the opening is as he looks at the linebackers, and it worked to perfection. Don't forget the mic, Vance. In motion, West Virginia, <laughs> first down. Thank you, sir. Okay, he got it right. That'll cost him five yards. And we saw those guys at the hotel, I didn't we? I heard them about three o'clock this morning. That's right, and four, and five. Yes. And out infinitum. West Virginia leading 16 to nothing early in the third period. First down, 15. Mountaineers from their 30 or the 37-yard line of Florida. Conwell, the fullback. Takes it down to about the 31. We we're talking about Don Nealon, the West Virginia coach. He not only was a head coach at Bowling Green, he was an assistant on Bo Schembechler's staff, which Dick Stockton alluded to. Was uh, Bo's chief recruiter. Did a good job recruiting Ohio for it. There he is. And he's got to be pleased the way his team is playing football. He has really turned the fortunes of the Mountaineers around the last couple of years. Former quarterback himself, and his record speaks for itself. And did you notice the last play they did counter back against the green? They're making that go a little bit. Second and 10 from the 32-yard line of Florida. Oliver Luck, pressure. Breaking through was Roy Harris, number 99. The defensive lineman of the Florida Gators to trap him back at the 39. He's only been trapped 11 times this year. That's once a game. He was looking for Wayne Brown, who was covered down the field. So then he had to take off. And this is one of the few times that you're going to see Oliver Luck get sacked by Roy Harris because Luck is so good at getting rid of the ball or finding somebody. He doesn't run all that much, but he throws those quick type patterns. And that time he couldn't find anybody, and he had to absorb the sack. Boy, you find him everywhere, don't you? Third down. Long. And Conwell is hit at the line of scrimmage. So credit the Florida Gators defense with a good job. Robin Fisher, number 66, one of the two senior starters for Florida. Dave Johnson, the center, was trying to wheel him out, but Robin Fisher made the penetration and beat the counter play that time back against the grain. If Fisher had not made the tackle, that play might have gone for West Virginia. Gators, pretty good defensive outfit last year. They're not bad figures. 11th in the nation in total defense. McCowan to do the kicking. 
Ivory Curry with the fair catch at about the 12-yard line. And Florida will put it in play from there. Time out. 10 minutes, 37 seconds left to play in the third period. West Virginia leading Florida in the 14th annual Peach Bowl game. Florida with the football, first and 10 on their own 12-yard line. Let's meet the West Virginia starting linemen and linebackers. Calvin Turner, defensive tackle, from at West Virginia. Dave O'Black, nose guard for Park, Ohio. Todd Campbell, defensive tackle, New Kent's defensive end. Jeff Seals, outside linebacker, Seal Spring Merrill, for your my brother, James. <laughs> Dennis Folks, Columbus, Ohio, inside linebacker. Jeff Dean, inside linebacker, Williamstown, West Virginia. Bill Talley, outside linebacker, East Cleveland, Ohio. And they've done a great job so far holding Florida in check. First and ten. Gators trying to get it going here in the second half, trailing 16 to nothing. John L. Brown, the tailback, out to the 14th, pick up the two. Now let's introduce you to the West Virginia Mountaineers starting defensive backfield. Cedric King, defensive back, Boynton Beach, Florida. What's up, Boynton Beach? Steve Newgrave, cornerback, Peterstown, West Virginia. Tim Agee, free safety, happy New Year's, Bethesda, Maryland. Lynn Murray, strong safety, Youngstown, Ohio. I'm mom. Lynn, of course, had a safety in the, or rather, an interception to the first half. Second down, eight. Gators. From their 14-yard line, a lot of movement behind the line of scrimmage, but no flag. Peace. Just did get it out to Spencer Jackson, and that came so close to being picked off for an interception. Steve Newberry, number 28, who they compare to Tom Frightmore, another former West Virginia star who plays his football now in this very stadium with the Atlanta Falcons, almost coming up with the play. Turns out to a first down for Florida's Gators. And that, the way they play that zone, you got that short back up there when you're throwing out to that wide receiver. It looks like he's open because the cornerback's playing way off at that safety or intercepted. That was a very close call. Gators on their 23, and they need to get something going offensively. First to 10. John L. Brown. A yard, maybe two, and then jammed by the right side of the Mountaineers' defensive line, Dennis Folks. Number 50, a very active linebacker on the stop. Well, neither team has been able to really have a heck of a lot of offense in this game. The Florida defense has done a decent job against uh, Oliver Luck and West Virginia, even though they're losing 16 to nothing. But the key has been that running attack up the middle. Florida has not been able to run at all. I don't think anybody expected them not to be able to run at all. Miller in the backfield now, along with James Jones on second down 10. West Virginia has the number three pass defense in the nation coming in. Peace. Back at the six-yard line. Great job by Cedric King, number 15, blowing through there from the secondary on the blitz. Remember the last time he blitzed from the outside, the quarterback piece ran away from him. He couldn't get there in time. This time he said, there he goes again, running the other way, but I'm going to catch him. As Peace rolls out, couldn't find anybody, and you're going to see number 15 turned on the speeds like running a 100-yard dash, and he caught him and threw him down. Big play once again by the Mountaineers' defense, and they have just bottled Florida right up. Ball is back on the 7-yard line. Third down, 25. the tailback gets a couple maybe three out to around the 10 and again the Gators will have to punt this time out of their end zone almost ensuring excellent field position for the Mountaineers or their fans make a lot of noise oh boy this this football team up look at those West Virginia players come off the field they are really stoked up as are the fans and it right now it seems like there's more West Virginia fans here than Florida wouldn't you say Certainly from the noise level, of course, the Florida fans have not had that much to cheer about. Or a cabbage back to do the kicking. Drury and Armstead are the defense. Armstead with a fair catch signal at the 43-yard line. In Florida's end of the field. It'll be first down for the West Virginia Mountaineers when we return. 
33 yards on the putt. What's wrong with the computer? Tape drive. The Army's most technical skills are also the ones most in demand. But now if you qualify, there's a way to reserve the skill you want up to 12 months before you go in. It's called the Delayed Entry Program, and it guarantees you the training you want. Be all that you can be, cause we need you. Okay, it's up. In the Army. Datsun 280ZX. Someday. Maybe your someday is now. Two big shootouts in Dallas. Tomorrow, the Cotton Bowl. Bear Bryant leads his Alabama Crimson Tide against the Texas Longhorns. Then Saturday, the NFL playoffs, when the Tampa Bay Buccaneers sail into Texas Stadium to battle the high-flying Dallas Cowboys. The winner moves closer to the Super Bowl. Catch all the action here on CBS Sports. West Virginia has dominated this football game. They have a first and ten at the Florida 43-yard line. Oliver Luck, 10 out of 18 for 80 yards, but doing a great job running the Mountaineer attack. Lane Brown is wide to the right side. Billy Evans is split to the left. They've had success on the ground, so why not keep it up? Conwell over the right side. Dane Conwell, the fullback. Let's go down to the field to Dick Stockton. Well, this may be the best assignment I've had all day. You people cold? We're freezing, but we love it. We love it. This, this, this is Mountaineer weather. This is. We're used to this stuff. Did you expect anything like this? No. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It was warmer. All right. They thought it would be warmer. So did I. All right. Let's go back to the game. Frank? <laughs> you do figure out to turn a bad situation or how to turn a bad situation into a good one. Second and six. Guy with the dirtiest jersey on the field has got to be Conwell, the fullback. He's picking up yardage up the middle consistently. Third down, they're still looking at two or three for the first down. Hello to you, and Happy New Year. Gators just trying to figure out what in the world is going on. This is a team that uh, plays excellent defense. In fact, it led the Southeast Conference in defense, allowing an average of 256 yards per game total. Third down, make it three for the first down. From the 36, Ollie Luck. He's an opening. Throws it cross field and roll back. 30, and down to the 25. First down, West Virginia. What a great play by Oliver Luck because Waldak is the man he was going to to begin with. Yeah, it looks like he might have a sprained ankle. Walzak came out of the backfield with the option of cutting in or out. It was covered well by the Florida linebackers. Then Luck proceeded to roll out, and Walzak kept going. He's been a great versatile back, Walzak. That'll hurt him. Okay, now you're going to see him looking for Walzak. Then he has to go out. Now, Walzak will come right through your screen right here back this way. He throws it back to number 42, and they got enough for the first down. Great heads-up ad-lib play. Back to live action. First down from the 26-yard line. Virginia continuing to grind it out. Curlin Beck, number 20, who came in at the tailback spot replacing Walzak. Picks up around five, makes it second down five. Fernando Jackson, number 49, of the stop. Well, I would say this is a big drive. Uh, they would come pretty close to put the floor away if they score here. Ball is spotted on the 20-yard line. It is second and five for the West Virginia Mountaineers. Five minutes left to play in the third period. West Virginia leading 16 to nothing. Evans in motion across the backfield. Beck have another first down. He's right at the 15-yard line. Good play. Another counter as he followed Mike Durrett. The pulling man and just followed his blocker. Got himself some big yardage. This counter stuff is really working for West Virginia. First down for the Mountaineers at the Florida 15. Beck 
back in motion this time, and they give it to the fullback, Conwell. They're around the 13-yard line, pick up a two, maybe three yards of the play. Robin Fisher, number 66, on the stop for the Florida Gators. Oliver Lux had 15 West Virginia quarterbacking records. I would say that's not too bad of a career. Played some as a freshman, has been there a long, long time. How they got him out of Cleveland, how Cleveland and Ohio let him go, I'll never know. Wonder how he got by Ohio State, Michigan, all the rest. Second and eight. Luck hitting Hollins inside the 10. Rich Hollins, the wide receiver, making the grab at the eight yard line. They have to reach the five to pick up another first down. And this is what you call your just quick pop. One, two, three, timing pass, throw the ball, hope he breaks the tackle. Hollins does not break the tackle because, of course, Ivory Curry was there, but they got a few yards. They've got Florida in a bind, a third and two or three, and you get a run or pass situation down there. So let's see if they, uh, what they do with luck on this. He has not been a rollout quarterback that much this year, but he has run more today. Back number 20 and Conwell in the backfield. Third down three. Ball is at the seven-yard line of the Florida Gators. And Florida is calling timeout, stopping the clock with three minutes and nine seconds left to play in the third period. Mountaineers lead it, 16 to nothing. Some of your favorite stars with you on CBS tonight to celebrate and see in the new year. Happy New Year, America. Donnie Osmond and Marilyn McCoo at the Waldorf Astoria. Donnie Mills with the Times Square Ball, the Pointer Sisters with Les Brown in Vegas, and Mickey Gilly and the Urban Cowboy Band from Pasadena. Watch it tonight on CBS, starting at 11.30, 10.30 Central Time. West Virginia Mountaineers driving for another score. Third and three from the Florida, seven-yard line. Oliver Luck on the rollout, overthrowing the intended receiver. He was going for number 85, David Galloway. A, cor a correction, 85 is Mark Rao. Well, they got the situation they wanted. They had luck out there on the rollout with nobody really bothering him. He threw on the run. It was just a little bit too much up and over as Rao was open. Woodside comes on to try what would be his fourth field goal of the game. He is three out of four. He's already set a record from 49 yards. This will be a chip shot, 24 yards out. He's at the left hash mark. So it is somewhat of an angle. He drills it through. That young man has to be a strong contender for MVP in this game. Four field goals and five tries. Time out. We'll be back in just a moment. Welcome back to the Peach Bowl in Atlanta. Paul Woodside has now set a new Peach Bowl record with four successful field goal attempts. The old record three set by Steve Beckemeyer of Maryland back in 73. And something we haven't mentioned, John. He's just a freshman. He's going to be around a while. A freshman walk-on. Paul Woodside, one of the heroes of this game. Hampton has replaced Curry as the deep man. Lorenzo Hampton fumbles it at the one. Brings it out to the 10, 20. And stopped at the 27-yard line. Scott Dixon, number 59, making the stop for the West Virginia Mountaineers. Looking at this future schedule, West Virginia opens with Oklahoma next year. And Maryland. They also play Pitt and Penn State and Syracuse. Florida still going with Wayne Peace. You know, Bob Huco has had some good games for this team in the past couple of years, too. They might want to try a little change if things continue this way. First and 10 from the 27-yard line. Peace has not been able to get the offense going. The intended receiver was Howard Akers, number six. And moving up on him quickly was Don Stemple, number 35. Come on, Dave! Second and ten. A hurry up offense here. Two minutes, 45 seconds left in the third period. And Florida trailing 19 to nothing. One back, and that's Jones. Peace. Incomplete. Catchable throw. And let's go down now to Dick Stockton. 
Another good assignment. This is Amy Sermons, who's 18 years old and the Peach Bowl queen for 1981. Tell me a little bit where you go to school uh, briefly and uh, how you feel about being queen of the Peach Bowl. I go to Barry in Rome, Georgia, and we're having a great time this week. This is the most memorable Peach Bowl I've ever had, and I'd like to thank the Waycross Line for the sponsor. All right, congratulations to you. <laughs> On third and ten, the pass intended for Jones from base incomplete and again Florida will have to punt. By the way our director Larry Cavallino was one of the judges in the Peach Bowl contest so his duty hadn't been all bad this week oh, either. Yeah, he resisted he really didn't want to do it really but fought uh, him. he decided to go ahead and do it. That's him there in the lower right hand portion of your screen. <laughs> You know, and getting back to the football game for just a second, things have gone from bad to worse for Florida. Or a cabbage. Running away, kick is high and a little bit short. Fair catch is signaled by Armstead at the 41-yard line. I'm a little surprised they'd go with that hurry-up offense. Uh, two minutes and 23 seconds. There are the other, uh, the runners up. Uh, as producer David Dinkins. I think he just put that mask on. <laughs> hey, he's going to get us now. We better get back to this football game in a hurry. Okay, West Virginia now, I'm sure, going to try and control the ball. First and 10 from the 41 yard line. Mountaineers defense is just completely dominating Florida's offense. Walzak, who twisted his ankle earlier, right back in the game, picked up five out to the 47 yard line. Florida simply can't stop them. Florida defense is so geared to swarming. They have those fast linebackers. They play out of the 5-2, which is really a 3-4. And they always just go with the first action that you have. One, two, three, quick steps. And boom, by that time when they come back against the grain, it's hard for them to react. And that's been the main success. And I hate to keep repeating it, but that was the five yards right there. That's why. On second and five, they stay on the ground. Again, Walzak for the first down. Into Florida territory, dragging tacklers with him down to the 42. Tony Lilly finally made the stop. I got my most valuable player ballot here. I think I'm going to put Walzak's name on. He's really impressed. Well, I couldn't disagree at this point. I could not disagree. He's done a great job in this football game. He and Woodside certainly have uh, truly been outstanding for West Virginia. First and ten, Mountaineers. On the move at the 43-yard line of the Florida Gators. Ball sack this time in motion. And Conwell gets the call. Inside the 40 to the 39. How's this for a way to open uh, 1982? Miami, Southern Cal, Mississippi State, and LSU. That's Florida's opening schedule next year. Charlie Pell's going to find out real quick if he's got a top-10 team or not. Here's the roster breakdown of these two teams. And particularly, notice uh, Florida. Just two seniors on that club. That's among the starters. Second and seven. Ball is at the Gator 40-yard line. Luck. Little swing pass out to Walzak. Nice cutback. To about the 34. Robin Fisher, number 66, makes the stop for Charlie Pell's team. Clock is ticking away the final 30 seconds of the third period. West Virginia leading 19 to nothing. Don't forget, this just starts a great weekend of football watching action on CBS. Cotton Bowl tomorrow. NFL divisional playoffs over the weekend. We've got it all for you. On third down, needing one for the first down. Walzak head down. Has the first at the 30-yard line. Make that Conwell, the fullback, in this case, 32. Both their jerseys are equally dirty now. And some really good blocking, that interior line. Keith Jones got Galloway out of there on that. Some good blocking going on there because these backs don't run in there without somebody making the hole. And this is tough yardage situation. They know they're not going to throw that much, yet they're still gaining yards up the middle. That's the end of the third quarter with the score. West Virginia, 19, Florida, nothing. We'll be back with the start of the fourth period after this word from your local station. This weekend, the playoffs. Saturday, Tampa Bay meets Dallas. Sunday, the New York Giants battle San Francisco. Catch all the excitement this weekend on CBS Sports. Michelob Light, an exceptional light beer with a rich, smooth taste. And by Sears Tire and Auto Center. 
home of straight talk, good values, and satisfaction. With Dick Stockton and Johnny Morris, Mike Lieber back at the Peach Bowl in Atlanta, Georgia. As we start the fourth period of play, West Virginia dominating throughout, leading 19 to nothing. And the Mountaineers with a first and 10 at the Florida 29. Look at that time of possession. They've doubled Florida's possession time. Collins in motion. And we get some contact prior to the snap. Involving Dave Johnson, number 57, the West Virginia center. Johnson is an interesting story. The offside against Florida. He was a fine tight end. Had knee surgery. Doctors say he couldn't play end anymore, but he could play center. And so he's turned into an outstanding center. We have encroachment. Florida, first down. Well, you find that centers have a big job in there, but it's usually within a range of five to six yards around the, the center of the action there. He does not have to pull out and run somewhere too often, and uh, I can see why he's able to do that. First and five. West Virginia now at the 24-yard line of Florida. Again, Mullins in motion. They go straight up the middle. Walzak diving for the first down to the 16. Tony Lilly, number 18 on the tackle, and he's made a ton of them. Nice trap blocking. Andre Giss came across. Good blocking. Boy, are they manhandling that Gator defensive line. Nobody expected it. It'll be first and ten for the Mountaineers at the 16-yard line of the Florida Gators. And limping off the field is number 99, Roy Harris, the defensive lineman of Florida. Ball to the left side. Brown to the right. And they go with the fullback, Conwell, up the middle of the 13-yard line. I've got to believe West Virginia has even surprised itself at its ability to move the ball to the ground. They haven't done it consistently all year, and, but they're doing it today. And actually, if the Mountaineers win, their record will be 9-3, and three, and I think that ties the best record ever for this university, West Virginia Mountaineers. Great impetus, certainly going into 1982 for Don Neelan's bunch. Slot formation to the right side on second down seven from the 13-yard line. Walzak around left end. He will be stopped just short of the goal line. First and goal at the two as he was hit at the five and set really forward. What a great block by Dane Conwell to number 32 for his running mate as they came around, and you'll see 79, Mike Durrett come around. Here's 32 on the right side of your screen. He's going to throw the key block as he knocks Curry down, and Walsack gets to the outside and almost went for the touchdown. A uh, great hand save there by Gilliam, or he would have had the touchdown. Made it the one block there from Evans. There's the block, Conwell's block. That was the key. Evans just got a piece of his man there. First and goal from the three-yard line. Conwell gets a yard to the two. Who said the Mountaineers couldn't run the football? I mean, all year you'd think it would have come out a couple or three times, and it really didn't very much all year. I don't know. The way Luck has been throwing it, they haven't needed to run that much. That's right. One thing Don Nealon says is that he, he's he gone, you know, he had a good quarterback, good receivers, and he's... He's gone with his personnel, and that's one of the reasons they left the running game, because they did so well passing. But uh, if there was more to this season, he'd have to change his philosophy and go back the other way a little bit. Second and goal from the two-yard line. Conwell to about the one. And it'll be third and goal from that point. West Virginia Mountaineers rush for an average of 137 yards per game. Their leading rusher is back with 460 yards. That's the leading rusher. That's not too many yards for your number one rusher. Third and goal from about a yard and a half away. Oliver Luck, the West Virginia quarterback. Collins in motion. Conwell, touchdown. Off the option. There's another surprise play. 
as Oliver Luck runs an option play, but she has not done too much. Pitched out to Walzak, and it was a touchdown into the corner of the end zone, and I think West Virginia may have put this game away. It was a beautiful play. Nicely executed for a team that has a front that hype. You're going to see Luck actually spins around, comes back the other way. There's a spin, the fake of the dive, and then as Curry comes to make the tackle on Luck, he just pitched it out to Walzak into the corner of the end zone. Touchdown, West Virginia. Their rushing game around 200 yards now, just roughly. Woodside is on to try the extra point. McCowan on the hold, and the kick is good. Woodside tacks on another extra point in addition to four out of five field goals. We do have a flag. That may be against Florida because it looked like they might have roughed the hold or somebody came flying through there. We have personal foul. Florida roughing the kicker. Penalty assessed on the kickoff. Take another look at the touchdown. Spin, fake of the dive to hold him for just a second. Luck with the pitch just as he got clobbered by Curry. Excellent play. The timing was perfect. They ran it just like the coach puts it up on the blackboard. Great afternoon for Walzak, who has rushed for 42 yards and caught eight passes for 75. There's the book on the West Virginia scoring drive. Again, moving the ball easily. 59 yards and nine plays. And Walzak going the final yard. The uh, penalty on the extra point a moment ago against Florida is being assessed here prior to the kickoff, which means that Woodside's going to be able to kick it off from the Florida 45 on a range of fours. Well, he ought to kick a little squibber or even an onside kick. Even if they didn't get the onside kick, they'd have him back at the 35-yard line or so. It might be worth a shot at it. What the heck? Great thrill for this walk-on freshman place kicker who set a peach bowl record. Kicked the three longest field goals of his career today. And four out of five. Lorenzo Hampton downs into the end zone. We'll go down to the field to Dick Stockton. Frank, this may be the last game for Gary Tranquil, who's the offensive coordinator at West Virginia. He's been the only candidate who's been interviewed twice for the vacant Navy job. George Welsh has left. He worked under Welsh before at Navy and was assistant at Ohio State before coming to West Virginia under Don Neal, and he worked for him at Bowling Green. So Gary Tranquil, 41 years old, could be heading for Navy. He's done a fine job today. Back to you. Well, if I was Navy or anyone else, I think I'd be impressed by what I've seen of his work today. He gets an A-plus for today's action. Absolutely. First and ten. Florida Gators from their 20-yard line. Florida sticking with Wayne Peace at the quarterback position. Jones out to the 23. Pace, the sophomore, 6 out of 12, but has been held pretty much in check. And you notice Florida now going with the hurry-up offense. This time certainly a factor, trailing 26-0 with 11 minutes and 40 seconds remaining. Fumble. Pace fell on it behind the line of scrimmage at the 20. It'll be third and 10. Pace was a great high school quarterback at Lakeland, very highly recruited. Really come on to his own. We have 37,582 in attendance. They sold over 50,000 tickets They're right in the area. A lot of folks, because the bad weather, decided to sit this one out. Pace going long, intended for Jackson, and it's picked off. Intercepted by Tim Agee, number 44. Yet another turnover, and West Virginia takes the football at their 45. We've got a flag back down around the line of scrimmage, so hold everything. It's going to be against Florida, which will be declined. It will be West Virginia's football, and Peace and had really Spencer downfield open, and open but he just couldn't get enough mustard on it. Everybody was able to react and get back, and A.G. made the interception. So the Mountaineers get the football once again at their 39-yard line, their jubilant bench. Everything has gone right for West Virginia today, and to their credit, they've made it go right. Florida was favored by eight points coming into this game. Back in at the tailback position, Conwell at the fullback. Conwell... 
to about the 40-yard line. And a long afternoon. There's A.G. who just made the interception. Well, he's saying hello to Mom and Dad. And everybody else. <laughs> he's just a sophomore. <laughs> Played the latter part of the season with a fractured wrist. You don't think those guys are pumped up? Well, it's been a while since they played their football game. They've been preparing for this for a long time. The regular season ended a long time ago. Second down nine. Luck on the quarterback draw. He's had luck with it today. This time, however, run out of bounds in front of the Florida bench at about the 43. It'll be third down seven. There's the Florida Gator, or what is left of him. No smile on his face, but there'll always be next year. Yes, he is a somewhat toothless Gator today. Do you think he's a freshman too? Looks like he's been around a few years. I'd like to see the Mountaineer go after him with his rifle. <laughs> Mountaineers have done a bit of Gator hunting. There's Coach Nealon of West Virginia. Down six. Oliver Luck. Line catch at the 50 yard line. Doing a good job of protecting the ball is Mark Rao, the tight end, number 85. Rao, prior to the season, set a goal for himself 20 catches. Yes, you can see him. He gets jammed at the line of scrimmage, but comes across there, finds the open spot, and makes the grab. Nice play by Mark Rao, who hasn't been a real factor in this game as we expected because there's been a couple of games late in the season he's caught 10 passes so West Virginia has been able to do it well without really having Rao be that big of a factor as you said he caught those 20 catches his goal in just two games wound up with 61 in the year was named a second team All-American Jody McCown to do the putting Ivory Curry chasing this one fields it at the 20 yard line surrounded by white shirts no place to go as he is dropped at the 22 Nine minutes, 35 seconds left. Daniel Peach Bowl from Atlanta, Georgia. And we'll be back right after this. New quarterback for the Florida Gators, Bob Huco, number 12, has come in. He shared quarterbacking duties earlier in the year with Wayne Peace. Got hurt about the fourth or fifth game and sat out most of the rest of the season as Peace did a fine job. Left-hander. And spots a receiver over the middle. Lang, number two, making his first catch of the day. B. Lang at the 30-yard line. They call Hugo Snake. The obvious physical resemblance to Kenny Stabler. And you're going to see Lang just comes across. He trails the left-handed quarterback rolling left. Just looks for the, the, the open spot there, and he's kind of a safety valve. They were looking for Akers, and he was covered. Pickup of nine. It is second down one as they come to the near side. Again, going to the wide receiver, Lang. Breaks loose and gets to midfield for the first down. Isn't it amazing sometimes? You put a new quarterback in, and things suddenly perk up. Of course, obviously, West Virginia's loosened up their defense now. They'll give me that short one. This is just a quick one out to the wide receiver, and Lang is quick enough that he can. Uh, he got away from Tally and then turned up the field, put on a little fancy Dan here, got a few moves and got some yards and got a first down for Florida. First and ten for the Gators from midfield. Intended for Akers, number six, who couldn't hold it. Newberry, number 28, coming up quickly. Charlie Pell thought earlier in the season, look at the difference in total offense, that he could have a two-quarterback offense. He really, sincerely thought that. He found out different. And uh, coaches seem to think that. Players will tell you, you got to have one guy, right? That's right. And Except he decided on peace eventually. Although part of that decision was uh, mandated by the injury to Hugo. Second and ten from the 50-yard line. Yuko blocked behind the line of scrimmage. Big sack by number 50, who's been all over the field. Dennis Folks from Columbus, Ohio. Well, that shows you a little speed and quickness to get through there because that was a quick pop pass that wasn't open. And by the time he had a chance to react to go somewhere else, there was Folks in there for the tackle. So 
Look at this. Florida usually scores uh, quite a bit in the second quarter. They scored zip in the second quarter. In fact, they've scored zip all, all afternoon. What a tribute to West Virginia's defense. Just can't say it enough. 26 to nothing. It is third down, 10. Gators from the 50-yard line. Blitz. Yuko looking for Lang downfield, but he'll never get it away. Jeff Seals, number 80, blew through there. Stemple was there for the secondary. Jeff Seals got the closest. He was there first, but Stemple, number 35, was coming. They were coming from the back side. Let's go down to Dick Stockton as the Gators prepare to punt. All right, Frank, you know, you talked about Florida being a powerhouse next year. One of the big reasons is the schedule. On the even year, they're tough. They have Auburn. They have LSU, Mississippi State, and Miami at home. On alternate years, they have them on the road, so they're going to be awfully tough. Seven of their first eight games are at home. They're getting whipped today by West Virginia. But, you know, Charlie Pell will have them coming back strong next year. One of the top favorites, as you pointed out already. Back to you. Or Cabbage's punt rolling out of bounds at the 13-yard line. West Virginia will take over at that point with seven minutes, five seconds left to play in the football game. 51 yards on the kick by the Florida punter. Step prior to the Super Bowl. Boy, CBS really is becoming the, the network of live sports. We talk about pro football. We have college football, college basketball, NBA basketball, live sports action on CBS. First and ten, Mountaineers from their 13. Luck with a fumble, taking the snap back from his center, Dave Johnson. So there'll be no gain on that play. Taking a look at Florida's schedule this year. These are the 81 schedules. Only one time Florida has been below double figures. They had one common opponent, Frank, and that was uh, Maryland. Both beat Maryland. I think West Virginia by four, and uh, Florida beat Maryland by five. So this was supposed to be a close game. Florida was not shut out this year. Mississippi State beat them 28 to 7. Outside of that, 15 points is the lowest point total on the year. Oliver Luck looking downfield, being chased. And run out of bounds at about the seven-yard line. Knight, number 24. The first man to get them, along with Myers, number 76. Well, they slid him right into the mud that time. He came up chewing a little dirt, a little Georgia dirt. But he'll take it. Not dirt down here. It's red clay. Red clay. Charlie Pell wonders what it is. Well, it's been a long afternoon for Charlie. Time to go back to Gainesville and regroup. Start thinking about 1982. Third down, 15. West Virginia Mountaineers backed up to their five-yard line. Conwell breaks it out to about the 20-yard line, short of the first down, by three or four yards. Conwell, who has had a very good afternoon, West Virginia has not had a running back all year pick up 100 yards rushing in a game, but he's closing in on it. Great trap block by Keith Jones as a whole bunch of people come in for the punt. Godwell with 90 yards rushing in 24 carries. The leading rusher in the game. So West Virginia will punt it away. McCowan will kick to Ivory Curry, number 26. Under five minutes left to play. Line drive kick. This will be run back by Curry from the 40 to the 45. To midfield to the 45. And Curry dragging tackling inside the 40-yard line of the West Virginia Mountaineers. Florida's deepest penetration in the first half was down to the 22 after a turnover. But they failed to capitalize and were pushed back to the 40-yard line. Well, we'll be in the Cotton Bowl tomorrow afternoon to watch the Alabama Crimson Tide take on the Texas Longhorns. Alabama still with an outside shot at the national championship depending on what happens in the other major bowl games. You know, Alabama has never beaten Texas. No, I didn't know that. Yeah, Bear Bryant has beaten Texas once in his coaching career, and that's when he was at Texas A&M back in the mid-50s. Florida with a first down at the West Virginia 40-yard line. 
Jones on the carry inside the 35 to the 34. I imagine West Virginia now will get itself pumped up trying to get the shutout. That'd That's a, right. That'd be a feather in their cap. Now, let James Jones run a little bit. As long as that clock runs, they don't mind. West Virginia has not scored a shutout this year. So this will be the first one, the final game of the year. What a great performance by the Mountaineers defense. Second down six. Again, Jones and the big fullback is smothered after picking up a yard or so on the far side in front of the Gator bench. Well, you have to wonder what's going on uh, through Florida's mind. That's two runs in a row when you're trying to get on the board and you're down to four minutes running at three minutes and 57 seconds and you're running the ball. I'd like to see him get on the board, wouldn't you? I don't know. It would be nice if you were a Florida fan anyway. That's right. To see him come away with some points. Third down, seven. The lefty, Bob Yuko. Looking for a receiver going long for Texas. Oh, had it interrupted in the end zone. Jackson, the speedster, got behind everybody. And Yuko dropped it in his lap. And he couldn't hold it. He got it down there far enough. Plenty catchable. Spencer Jackson right up and over the shoulder. And you're going to see it hit him right there. He should have had it. Not an easy catch, but Spencer Jackson knows that he should have caught the ball. Pretty good throw by Hugo under the run, having to throw that far downfield. Lynn Murray, number two, was back there defending. It is fourth down at six. Florida Gators at the 35-yard line of the West Virginia Mountaineers. Yuko blowing on those fingers, trying to warm them up. Temperature has dropped to about 35, I would imagine. That'll keep the drive going, the pass over the middle. As Dennis Folks puts the hit on Dwayne Dixon, number 83, who is the brother of Hewitt Dixon, the former Oakland Raider. Three minutes, 25 seconds left. First down at the 22-yard line of West Virginia. One running back, and that's Jones, number 30. Yuko trying to put some points to the board. He's got a man open in the end zone. Touchdown! Chris Faulkner, number 80, the tight end, makes the catch, and the Gators finally get on the scoreboard. Faulkner, who is the outstanding player of the year last year in the Southeast Conference, and then this year was hit with all sorts of injuries. The newcomer of the year. And he just went down the field, split the zones. He'll go fake to the right. He knew where he was going to throw. He was his primary receiver. Turn around, turn back, left hand, look for Faulkner. He split the zones right in between him with a perfect pass. As you can see, the defenders were on the right and left, but not right in the center where Chris Faulkner was. Touchdown. And he can run about a 4 6 40 for a big man at 240 pounds. That's moving him out. He's played guard. He's, he can play a lot of positions. He's big and fast. He's a junior. Last year was the Southeast Conference consensus. All conference tight end. And this year, of course, slowed by injuries and replaced a good part of the season by Mike Malarkey. They'll go for two on the extra point try. Yuko looking for a receiver. Akers did not get across. Howard Akers, they say, was stopped short of the goal line. So the two-point conversion fails by Florida. Boy, it looked pretty close to me. Hakers just from the inside slot position just bend it out to the sidelines. And let's see if that ball got over. We got a flag down anyway. Ooh, it looked like it was in to me. Number 26, Alan Moreland on the tackle. But they're going to get another shot at it. Penalty's going to be against uh, West Virginia. And we'll get the call here from Vance Carlson, the referee. So they'll get another try at the extra point. I did not see what the call was, but the indicated, the preliminary indication, was against West Virginia. Three minutes, three seconds left to play in the 14th annual Beach Bowl football game here from Atlanta's Fulton County Stadium on a very wet, chilly afternoon. Fortunately, we haven't had any precipitation to speak of since the game has started. some confusion down there as to what they're going to do on this penalty situation. They're getting another shot at it, but 
from my view of the replay, it looked like he came down in the uh, end zone anyway for the two points. It's uh, irrelevant right now as far as who's going to win this football game. Let's see what they do here. We had two penalties on West Virginia. One was for 12 men on the field. The penalty should be the same. We'll try over. Well, 12 men on the field. They hadn't changed that rule lately, so that's a penalty. Extra point try coming up again for the Florida Gators. Pass is intended for Spencer Jackson. And Newberry knocked it away. So the extra point try is no good. And Florida will be kicking off with three minutes and three seconds left to play in the football game. Dick Stockton here at the Peach Bowl in Atlanta as the Florida Gators prepare to kick off to the West Virginia Mountaineers. They trail by a score of 26 to 6. And win or lose, these youngsters have had a good time during their visit to Atlanta. And this will tie West Virginia's best record ever at 9 and 3. Brian Clark, it's got to be a disappointing way for Clark to close out his career with the Florida Gators. Truly one of the outstanding place kickers. It was touched. Offside. Free football. And coming up with it was Willie Drury, number 48 for West Virginia. So the onside's attempt fails by Florida. And the Mountaineers have to run out three minutes worth of clock. And they've got themselves a victory. They're third in four tries at the Peach Bowl. Bob Yuko, the backup quarterback, providing the six-pointer on a 20-yard throw to Faulkner. And Yuko's been doing pretty well. I wonder if Charlie Pell is saying to himself that maybe yeah. he should have gone to Yuko earlier. Charlie doesn't want another quarterback controversy to start the new year, that's for sure. West Virginia going to put it on the ground. Try to run off some of that clock time. Conwell now uh, has a chance to become the first 100-yard rusher for West Virginia. He's got 91 and 25 carries. Wayne Peace wound up with six completions in 13 tries for only 47 yards. Gators turned it over way too many times. Four fumbles lost in the first half. Second and nine. That's Beck. The second string tailback driving out for another first down. At the 49-yard line in West Virginia's end of the field. They're seeing some clean white jerseys and those are players who haven't played uh, too much today and haven't played too much throughout the season, but they all came, 104 players from each team and there are a lot of what you call the hit men uh, that give the look to the regulars and practice and run and everything else all year and don't get a chance to play. They all were able to make this trip and enjoy the Peach Bowl, and that's really, I think, a good tribute to the schools to take everybody along. West Virginia between 200 and 250 yards on the ground against Florida, which is almost double their season average. One of the people we talked about prior to the game, Daryl Talley, number 90 from the Cleveland area, turned into a great <laughs> linebacker. <huh? laughs> Well, yeah, he's scary to death out there, wouldn't you? Put your helmet back on, Daryl. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be on the airplanes going home. It would be heavy planes. After they lost. Second and eight. That will not happen today. Curry in motion. Give us to Beck, the tailback. Well, you know what Beck is saying right now. Come on, guys. I know we won the game, but don't forget about it. You still have to block. i got to carry the ball. That's what has happened to West Virginia in three previous appearances to the Peach Bowl. The only one they want to forget is 1972 when they were hammered by North Carolina State. That's the time remaining in the football game. One minute and six seconds. Timeout being called as one of the... Uh, I thought one of the Florida players was shaking up, but apparently not. They're just bringing out the uh, trainers. See if they can dry things up for just a moment. We'll be back right after this. Here are your most valuable players in the 14th annual Peach Bowl game. On offense, number 42, 
Mickey Walzak, the running back from West Virginia, who has had a sensational afternoon catching the football. Eight catches for 75 yards, rushed it nine times for 42. And on defense, number 35, Don Stemple, the defensive back from West Virginia. Third and 15. And it would appear that Oliver Luck will be given the final one minute to rest as West Virginia has come in with Kevin White, number 14, a freshman quarterback to finish things out here. A lot of substitutes on both sides. Don Nealon trying to get some of the newcomers into the game to say they've been in the Peach Bowl. And Ollie Luck accepting congratulations for a fine effort. I think he impressed the Pro Scouts today with his savvy and also his arm. He hit 14 out of 23 for 107 yards. Great way to close out his college career. He was a Rhodes Scholar nominee. Carries a great point average of 3.96. He had one B in his entire college career. And that was when he was a freshman. He said he better buckle down after that, I guess, when he got that B in calculus. 14 seconds left to play in the game. So this could be the final play of the football game. Obviously, at this point, I don't think Florida is interested in prolonging the agony and calling any timeouts. Walk off here of five yards against West Virginia. be impressed by the Mountaineers. Of course, you can't give out a team MVP, but if you did, I think it would have to go to the West Virginia defense. They have done some kind of job in shutting down a very high-powered Florida attack. A count in to do the putting. Ivory Curry watches this one bounce. Takes a Florida hop and is down at the 34-yard line. That'll be time for one more play. The executive producer of today's game was Kevin O'Malley, who is in Dallas for the Cotton Bowl game. We'll be joining up with Kevin tonight. Today's game was produced by David Dinkins, Jr. and directed by Larry Cavallina. The associate producer was John McDonough. Great job by these gentlemen in bringing you the telecast of this 14th annual Peach Bowl game. A lot of people work very hard behind the scenes to put one of these telecasts together. We're going to have one more play, and you would have to imagine they're going to throw the ball way downfield, but those West Virginia players don't seem to care much on the sidelines right now. Last play of the game. Bob Huco is going to do just that. A bullet down the middle, but that's it. As the pass is completed to Mike Malarkey, number 82, the tight end and Bob Nealon, or Don Nealon, I should say, gets a ride off the field from his West Virginia team. What a job they did preparing to play Florida. They were an underdog in this football game, and they completely dominated the contest. Beating Florida 26-6, first beating ever between these two schools on the gridiron. And I believe there'll be a little celebration from the Mountaineers tonight in Atlanta. A celebration going on all over the state of West Virginia right now. It's been a good game for West Virginia. As you said, Frank, it was a defensive dominance of Florida that made the difference and some pretty good strategy on offense. Not great offense, nothing explosive, but they attacked and approached the Florida defense the correct way to take advantage of Florida's quickness and try and counter that with misdirection type of plays. And it all works, so you have to give the offense and defense a lot of credit for West Virginia. Let's go down to the field now. Dick Stockton with the victorious coach, Don Nealon. Charlie, we've been talking about next year and what kind of great schedule you have, but this was a really a shocking loss for you today, and I'd like to know what explanation you have. Well, it was a disappointing loss. First thing, I thought West Virginia ran the ball better and more times than we anticipated. The other thing is Coach Nathan had his team better prepared. Our offense never got off track. We didn't have a, we didn't have a one drive against them, then we ended that with a turnover. I just think they had a better prepared football team today, and that's my fault. Well, let me tell you something. It's game of you to say a thing like that. I got the feeling watching the pregame warm-ups that your team came down and said, well, this isn't really our, our kind of weather. I think West Virginia said maybe it's an equalizer. They hit you right off the bat on defense, and they carried the ball the first time they had it, and they never let it go. They got the momentum early with our mistakes, and, and like you said, they never let up. Our players just, uh, they were better prepared than we were, and uh, 
uh, I thought Coach Nalen did an outstanding job on getting the running game going for their team. I thought that was the biggest difference of their ability to run against their defense. Charlie, uh, you had a good season nonetheless, and I know you're looking forward to great things in 82. Sure, sure. We've got good football players, and I'll do a better job myself. All right, thank, thank you me. very much. Charlie Pell of Florida, let's go right upstairs to Frank Lee. And Charlie indeed is a class act. He's got a big, big year to look forward to in 1982, losing just two senior starters, and the Gators are a team to be heard from. We introduced the victorious coach a moment ago, Don Nealon, and Dick Stockton's got him with him right now. Well, there's a happy coach, Don Neal. I have to say that Charlie Pell said he wasn't as prepared as you got your team prepared. You got the momentum early. You went from there. Obviously, defense was the name of your game today. Well, defense has been great for us all year. You know, nobody thought we could win except us. Our football team knew they could win. A lot of folks didn't think we could, but you know, it really doesn't matter about those other guys. It's our team. And uh, I think this is our finest hour. We played as well today as we have all year. What about your long lost rushing game? You couldn't find it all year, and what happens? Here it is in the Beach Bowl. We had to come down to Atlanta. They say this is a great town. I found my rushing game. Did you bring the weather with you? Well, you know what? For us, this is pretty good weather. Weatherman cooperated beautifully. I got to give you a lot of credit because you were up, you were definite underdogs against the Southeast Conference power. You're an independent. You didn't have the toughest of schedules. You played teams not with their best people necessarily all year. And then you, you won against your toughest foe of the season, I think, along with Britain, Penn State. And you really took it to them, and you never let up. And that was a mark of your club and your staff. Well, thank you very much. Our coaches did a great job. And, you know, our football team's like a family. We really stick together. And I'm so proud of these guys. You can't believe it. Just a super year for them. Done a great job in two years. They brought West Virginia back. Well, thank you. And we plan on getting a little better. All right. Don Nealon coach of West Virginia and it has been quite a day for the Mountaineers and they're still celebrating as their band is going full force the West Virginia Mountaineers accepting the trophy for being the Peach Bowl champs let's go back upstairs to Frank and Johnny thank you very much Dick Stockton good job down on the sidelines there's the very happy Mountaineers the most valuable players Don Stemple number 35 on the right the defensive back and Mickey Walzak number 42 the fine tailback, both with great afternoons here at the Peach Bowl in Atlanta, Georgia. Big, big victory for the West Virginia Mountaineers who wind up 9-3. and three. And Don Nealon really has turned the program around in the space of just a, a couple of years. I think he's got some good things to look forward to next year as well as, as Charlie Pell. He's going to lose some people, but they're looking forward to a big year. And they'll have to be ready when next year comes around because they're going to play Oklahoma, Maryland, and Pitt three out of the first four games. But Don Nealon has been up to the challenge, and as you said, he turned this program around, got them going. They were 6-6 six and six last year, now 9-3, and three, which ties the, the university's best record ever. The university has a lot of tradition. Good football players, 19 road scholars, and there's some right there holding that trophy up, uh, some pretty strong people. Well, our thanks to the Peach Bowl people for all of their fine hospitality. You know, the proceeds from this game go for a very worthwhile cause, the Lighthouse for the Blind. This is Frank Lieber for Johnny Morris and Dick Stockton saying so long from the Peach Bowl. Once again, the final score, West Virginia 26 and Florida 6. Remember to be with CBS Sports tomorrow at 2 Eastern for the Cotton Bowl where number three ranked Alabama takes on number five ranked Texas and Saturday at 12:30 Eastern time the 